Welcome to your sanity safe space with your favorite YouTube podcast duo. Skag3, whoever he is. Get your quad fascist ass out of here! Saving the millennial generation in weekly installments. You are a terrific team on all counts. Live from a castle tower and his mother's basement, this is is the Matt and Blonde Show. I'll lead an effective strategy to mobilize true and international over depression. <laughs> bitch, you got coronavirus. I believe in the sand beneath my toes. The bitch gives a feeling and a deep feeling. I believe in the faith that grows. I think it's a big mistake. Look, I hope everybody's realized by now these masks make a difference. And the last thing, the last thing you need is Neanderthal thinking that in the meantime, everything's fine, take off your mask, forget it. It still matters. And it's critical, 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 critical that they follow the science, wear a mask, and stay socially distanced. It's definitely a no for me, dog. Hey, goodbye. have any second thoughts about the language that he used yesterday and how does comparing someone to a Neanderthal help convince them to change course and get on board with your public health message? The behavior of a Neanderthal, just to be very clear, the behavior of. He simply has was asked, uh, asked the American people to abide by wearing masks for 100 days. We're at about day 40, are we at day 40? Around there, 60 more days. Uh, that's what he's asking and he's certainly hopeful that businesses and people across the country will continue to do that. I doubt it. You are fake news. The American people are tired of women. Very fake news. I am black. I am gay. I am disabled. I agree with that. All right, America, go to the YouTube right now. Congratulations to both of you. You're awesome. All right, go, go. In five, four, three. I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Hello and welcome to the show. It is a great show. It is a terrific show. It is a tremendous show. Frankly, the very, very best. You can ask anyone about that. People often do, I'm told. This is the Matt and Blonde Show. My name is Matt Christensen. I'm flanked on my right, as always, by my wonderful co-host, Blonde. Welcome. Hello. Well, I hope all of you uh, Neanderthals are gathered round to praise our human leader, Joe Biden. He has found a way to give us $1,400 of our own money back. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, obviously only a Neanderthal would ever question how that's supposed to be a good deal, considering it costs each of us roughly $5,000 to get it, at least in debt acquired. It looks like the same sort of uh, steaming pile of government waste and fraud is coming right up, but we all should be grateful for these crumbs. Plus, uh, Democrats are uh, living out fantasies where they are continually victimized in attempted insurrections, even if they're totally imaginary. Did you see that Eric Swalwell is now suing the president, among other allies? He Mm -hmm. says he was preparing for hand to hand combat uh, on January (laughs) 6th. And I think any sane person who reads his lawsuit complaint thinks, damn, I wish I could have seen that. uh, Eric Swalwell taking off his suit jacket. What sort of. Uh, what sort of fighting technique is he familiar with? Is he trained in inquiring minds want to know. Plus the Texas legislature tries to stop a, uh, tries to stop social media censorship, or at least they're on their way to doing so by punishing the platforms that do it. We'll get into that story and it's getting even rougher for Andrew Cuomo. He's now up to five accusers and the leaders of the New York state assembly and Senate are calling for his resignation. At least the sausage girl is defending him. I, I I was not aware of this clip last week or I would have played it. Played it. The, you're going to eat the whole sausage or you should eat the whole sausage. She's out there defending him saying, no, that was just a fun time at the state fair. Leave yeah. Andrew Cuomo alone. I just really like sausage. What, what are you guys talking about? I don't think she clarified if she did, in fact, eat the whole sausage either. At least I didn't see that in the tweets. <laughs> Story, uh, entertaining story of the week to me. We've got a couple toward the latter end of the show. Legendary hoax eight. But first, uh, a news team tries to report on robberies in San Francisco and gets robbed while doing it. But thankfully, they mentally willed this guy with a Glock in their face not to shoot them in the face with the clock. So it's all good. Everybody's safe. 
And uh, this this involved hoax hate I mentioned. A guy called 911 on himself in the Seattle area to provoke a racist police attack. But the, pol- the racist police did not attack him, in fact. And they actually unraveled the scam. Hmm. That was a good one. I can't wait to talk about that. And, of course, we will check in with Super Chats on YouTube, Tippy Stream, and Trovo in between topics. Ten bucks and up on the Sunday show because we are no good low down money grabbers. It will be all this and, and more in your favorite couple hours of listening material. Remember, you can find everything show related and support the show over on the website. That's Matt Don't forget that the new show store is up and running. We have t-shirts, we have mugs, we have hats, we have stickers, we have everything potentially more coming. And plus, we have special deals from our friendly listener-owned businesses as well. This week's feature business is our friends over at Hero Soap Company. Do you love freedom? Do you love being clean? Then you'll love Hero Soap Company, made in the USA, chemical and fragrance-free. A portion of each purchase donated to veteran and first responder charities. Initial subscription purchase is matched bar for bar and sent overseas to deploy troops. Let freedom clean. Hero Soap Company. That's right. When you try out the amazing soaps from Hero Soap Company, not only are you getting an all-natural, great-smelling product, not only are you supporting deployed troops, not only do bald eagles circle you in admiration of your patriotism, but when you subscribe... You get additional savings and a fresh bar delivered straight to your door each month so you never have to remember to grab soap and you never run out. And if you don't like bar soap, no problem. Hero also has a line of liquid soaps of the same superior quality. Listeners of this show get 10% off all Hero soap products using promo code MCLISTENER. That's promo code MCLISTENER at HeroSoapCompany.com. You can find everything you need from Hero Soap, as well as other great offers from the rest of our friendly listener-owned businesses like Charity Swipes, Sonoran Defense Technologies, Phoenix Ammunition, and more at MattChristensenMedia.com slash deals. Deals for listeners by listeners. Just one quick announcement at the top of the show. We are doing the uh, hard show end time of 1130 Eastern, 830 Pacific. We will do our best to get to every super chat. And lately we have been able to. But please be advised that chats later in the show may not be read. And thanks for patience while we work out the new system. It's this. I want people to understand tonight's show is a borderline miracle. It, it should never have happened. And really the show going forward should never have happened. I, I've been, I feel like I've been saying this all the time lately that, uh, I feel like the last show was, uh, the final show because of things that were said or, you know, whatever, uh, topics discussed utterances from, uh, a certain member of the show's roster. <laughs> so just to, just as a reminder of what happened last week, and you, you tell me if any of this characterization is unfair, I don't want to put you on the spot, but The N-word, or at least the past tense form of the N-word as a verb, as said by the president, you said. That's fair. (laughs) Okay, hard on. I did say that, yeah. Yep. And then there was, uh, I suppose, uh, wishing for or longing for the death of Dr. Rachel. How would you characterize it? I said, kill it with fire. Oh, so it was advocacy of, okay. And and just to be clear, Susan, that, we're not saying that now. We said that last week. Last week. And I apologize for nothing. <laughs> no, no one would expect anything otherwise. <laughs> Come on. Uh, I thought about when it happened, I thought, oh, crap, am I going to have to bleep that? And then I remembered the N word has been said like two or three times on this show. And not by me. I've, I've said it before in different contexts. They all have a context. I don't need to explain. But it has been said, and I thought, am I going to have to go back and bleep it? I thought, no, that doesn't really make sense because it has been said in certain contexts on this show in the past. I'm not going to do that. Plus, I want the satisfaction of going to YouTube and appealing for monetization and having Susan's team say, yes, hard R N word threats against fine. Dr. Rachel. Just fine. The team at yeah. Verizon and Coca-Cola and other corporate advertisers have gotten back with us and they love it. Fully monetized from Susan. Who knows who's behind this? And once again, maybe we have a friend on the inside, but uh, I just wanted to update in case you were worried that this show might disappear. No, in fact, it's back stronger than ever, fully monetized, even though I know a lot of channels who have been demonetized in totality for much less. 
incredible. I want to return briefly to uh, last week's story about the flu. Uh, recall we what uh, flu? Yeah, it doesn't exist anymore. It, it's a historical relic. I could explain it to you sometime. But recall we had that story that during the week of February 15th, there were only 17 flu cases nationwide. We talked about how the narrative going forward was going to be masks and social distancing killed the flu. So we should do this every year now. Well, here is a uh, doctor pundit on CNN saying exactly that this week called it is we figure out what flu strains have been circulating in places like Australia or South America, which sort of pr- predicts what, what strains are likely to come into our, our country. There's been so little flu in those, those two areas. I, I think it's going to be hard for us to try and figure out what flu strains to pick. But you're right. It's, if we mask and social distance every winter, we will see a dramatic reduction in flu, which usually causes hundreds of thousands of hospitalizations and tens of thousands of deaths. I wonder whether that would be, will be the lesson uh, from this. Yeah, I wonder. Wow. I knew they were going to do this. You you did say that last week and several weeks ago. If masks and social distancing completely killed the flu, uh, which is what they're having us believe, why do you care what strains of flu are in the Southern Hemisphere? Yeah. If we can defeat them by just wearing a mask and socially distancing, who gives a shit? Why bother with the flu vaccine in the future? Mm. The flu vaccine never stopped the flu in the way that masks and social distancing have. So who cares? Yeah. It's a self-defeating point. And last week, I wasn't fully aware of just how absurd the flu data actually are this year. That report from that that local Kansas City station was about 17 17 cases nationally for that week in in mid-February. So I got curious about whether even one was in my neck of the woods. So I got to the Googling. And not only were there no flu cases uh, for that mid-February week in Montana... Turns out there are no flu cases for the year (laughs) in Montana. Not even one for a million people. Zero cases. And in nearby Washington, including, of course, the entire Seattle metro, there hasn't been even one flu death this year. Not one. Meanwhile, Idaho is getting hammered. You guys have five flu deaths this year. <laughs> you guys are getting wrecked. Even uh, I don't want to alarm you. One flu death in northern Idaho. So oh, just no. be advised when you go out. And God, yet, people are still falling for this. I I cannot believe it. Yeah, oh, yeah. There's not. This is the obvious consequence of being more responsible about masks and social distancing. We totally eliminated the flu. But you guys in in Idaho, you just don't get it. I don't know if you saw this, but I figured maybe you'd be proud. At least 100 people gathered at the Idaho Capitol in Boise on Saturday to burn masks. Very good. Uh, So maybe there's hope in Idaho. Uh, Seriously, though, I, I, I would encourage everybody, understand the data. If you're interested in this topic, Google flu cases and deaths in your area for the year. If you can't find news coverage, you can get the CDC data by poking through their website. To me, the total disappearance of the flu is is the biggest con in this never ending parade of cons. We're supposed to believe that we eliminated this rather than just reclassifying what we would have previously called the flu as coronavirus now. Yeah. The more we submit to this, the more nonsense we're going to add to this parade. There are a couple entries this week that I wanted to talk about and just I can't believe I'm watching real people when I watch clips like this, but this is the state that we're in. The Milwaukee Bucks NBA team started allowing 1,800 fans to attend games in mid-February, but don't count on anything fun like the Kiss Cam. That's a disease spreader, a super spreader. It's been replaced by the quasi-pornographic hand sanitizer cam. Good aim. <laughs> it's you air five people. You don't high five. You don't touch. Even if you sanitized your hands. Okay. That is just plain old propaganda. I, I don't know what else to do. Yeah. And Clay Travis, who I originally saw post this, he said this was either made by people who watch way too much porn or people who have never watched porn. I can't tell. (laughs) 
I have no <gasps> idea, but that's just outright bizarre. And this is what this is what sucks. It's like even when we get a dose of normalcy, okay, we're gonna allow a couple thousand fans in. You still have to be propagandized in this yeah. way just to watch the basketball game. And uh, maybe maybe you think you can avoid a lot of that nonsense. Maybe you're one of the people who uses the drive-through to avoid masks. I do that as much as I can if I'm if I'm getting to go food. Well, your days may be numbered as well. This woman in Los Angeles posted a video of uh, her trying to get a drink through the Starbucks drive through without a mask. They refused to hand her her drink, but they did offer to hand her a mask. I am at the Starbucks drive through and I had to document this because they try to make you wear a mask to literally pick up your fucking drink. Hi. Uh, you have a mask? No, I don't. I can give you one. Uh, you can give me one? I can give you one. Why I, do I... I need you to wear a mask. So you can hand me a mask? I can hand you one, yeah. But you can't hand me the drink without a mask? <laughs> You've got to wear a mask. How does that make any sense? That's what, that's what I, I just need you to wear a mask when you do your mind? Well, if you can hand me a mask, why can't you just hand me the drink? I can hand you the mask. <laughs> what the, who the fuck made this shit up? <laughs> Fucking piece. <laughs> Of utter garbage. Oh, speaking of utter garbage. <laughs> Welcome to Hollywood. Oh my god. Whoa, look at what I just fucking realized was there. <laughs> I can't tell wow. if that's one hobo wow. sleeping or hobos banging. She said it was a guy sleeping, so I'll go with that. But there's a lot of weird movement in there. Uh, if you can't see, of course, you can live in a world just full of disgusting hobo camps. But these people who are this obsessed about sanitation will not allow you to get your Starbucks drink without a mask. Meanwhile, sir, they, who they, is this based smoke show? Do you know anything about this? I, I have never heard of her until I looked at her Instagram to grab this, uh, this video the whole thing's 12 minutes long. And I would encourage people to watch because there are several twists and turns that are just hilarious. And she does a great job. Her name is Alison Wonderland, not Alice in Wonderland, Alison Wonderland, but I don't know anything more about her than that and of course if you can't tell she has a great t-shirt of joe biden sniffing that the defense secretary's wife that classic that classic <laughs> moment but she does seem like she has some interesting things to say and uh godspeed in in southern california she said that she's moving away in this video though anyway thank god uh joe biden has sniffed us into salvation we are <laughs> We are so thankful to have this man and his guidance. It sounds like the next round of Corona stimulus is well on its way. At least it's passed the Senate this weekend. So one would assume it's going to pass through the house and Joe Biden will sign it. But what are we looking at as far as details? Uh, God, is this really what's going to happen? We're, you know, money's going to be worth nothing after this. Nothing. Yeah, that's optimistic, uh, actually. <laughs> <laughs> individuals earning less than 75,000 and couples earning less than 150,000 receive the full 1400 plus an additional 1400 per dependent. Okay. Um, but the third round of checks phase out faster than earlier payments, completely cutting off individuals who earn more than 80,000 a year and married couples earning more than 160, regardless of how many children they have. And just so I understand, not that it's it matters that much. But, oh, yeah, you get cut off totally at a line instead of a before. Remember, for every what was it? Every thousand dollars you made or something, it was fifty dollars less. Something like that. Really? Is how it worked the, the first time around. This is all funny money, so I uh, don't give a shit. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, of course, I think they're still measuring this. If you haven't filed your taxes yet this year, all they would have to go on is your 2019 tax return. Yeah. Which that's that's ages ago. Anyway, somebody who mm -hmm. made a hundred thousand dollars in twenty nineteen might be totally screwed right now. And they are out they're, of work. They're out of luck. They're screwed yeah. over again. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of out of work, so as for unemployment benefits, the Senate and House bills differ on the provisions. If the House approves the Senate's changes and the bill is signed by Biden, the jobless may see little or no break in payments, but it depends on their state. So the yeah. Senate bill would continue the existing $300 weekly federal boost and the pandemic unemployment programs through September 6th. The House bill gives 400 weekly enhancements and continue it and the two pandemic programs through August 29th. 
Hmm. So, yeah. Um, And then Americans who would qualify for the relief packages, federal premium subsidies for Affordable Care Act policies, they need to wait until the new regulations are programmed into the Obamacare exchanges, which takes a few weeks. Okay. Uh, Yeah. So enrollees pay no more than 8.5% of their income, which is down from 10%. And then... Okay, I thought this was interesting. Those earning more than the current cap of 400% of the federal poverty level, which is 51,000 for an individual and 104 for a family of four, would become eligible for help. So you're eligible for help if you make less than $51,000 as an individual. Does does that seem absurd to you? Eligible for health insurance help, right? That's all we're talking about here? Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know. This much government control of everything seems absurd to me. These are yeah. all arbitrary lines drawn as though as though they uh, obviously help people. And I, I, it's sad to me that we have to get through three rounds of this and still be buying into this crap. Did you see we're not going to get any sort of uh, critical media coverage in the way that we would hope some sort of scrutiny to make sure that we're all not being conned beyond the coronavirus con that we're not being economically conned. Because by the way, I, I I just like a month ago, I went through and there was a great report out on all the fraud in the last rounds of coronavirus stimulus. This is a multi-billion dollar industry at this point is just fraudulent Rona benefit claims. And you're going to see that perpetually. Yeah. And you get coverage like this in the Washington Post headline Biden stimulus showers money on Americans sharply cutting poverty and favoring individuals over businesses. How does this cut poverty? Who, you know what would cut poverty? Creating jobs. Yeah. Who well, the at hell is having policies that create jobs? Who the hell is in poverty now who won't be in poverty after this bill passes? Yeah. Show me one person. First paragraph here. President <sighs> Biden's stimulus package which passed the Senate on Saturday, represents one of the most generous expansions of aid to the poor in recent history. While also showering thousands, or in some cases, tens of thousands of dollars on American families navigating the coronavirus pandemic. Not really. I mean, you're banning us from navigating the coronavirus pandemic. You don't allow us to make individual choices and decide what sort of risk is best for our families. They're They're not navigating. They're doing as they're told. There's no individual navigation whatsoever, or at least that is not what Joe Biden would encourage, as we'll get to in a moment. So don't uh, don't count on the, uh, you know, your, your trusty media here to actually apply scrutiny to this sort of thing. J- just think about the numbers here. Yeah, we are all paying roughly five thousand dollars for this thing. If you break down the cost of the bill divided by the population of the country, it's between five and six thousand dollars that we are all paying for either in taxation taken from us or in debt that the country is acquiring. And you're going to get fourteen hundred dollars of that back if you're of, of average income and let's say you're childless. That's not a good deal for you. If you have a normal job that has normal pay, you you you've traded fourteen hundred bucks for five for five grand to the government. That's not a good deal for you. But even if you're unemployed, let's say that you're out of work and looking and maybe you don't get a job for the five months that this covers. That's $300 extra uh, in weekly unemployment benefits. That means you cash out to something like $6,000. Maybe you basically break even, but for what, how is this a good deal? The, the idea that we're all being saved by this, we've all been stolen from, we've all been unethically controlled We've been thieved and then we get crumbs back and we're acting like this is salvation. This is nonsense. But we're going to keep doing it. And and of course, the question is, what sort of uh, what sort of pockets of government friends are going to be padded? What sort of Nigerian princes are going to be rich because of this? What sort? There was a case in Orange County, California, the last time around. This business was literally established for the purpose of. Well, yeah. Coronavirus relief fraud. And not only that, they had a line out around the corner at the place because they were filing fraudulent unemployment claims. You go in there, you pay them 700 bucks and they get you a good payout. They get you many times more than that in fraudulent Rona stimulus money. And it was so now granted, in fairness, that one. <laughs> I kind of respect this grift. I don't I shouldn't. <laughs> In, in fairness, that one was caught. OK, it, it was they did bust it up. But why? Because they had people around the block lined up like it was Black Friday at Best Buy. You know, they, they had to be that blatant and dumb to get caught. 
So we are just thieving from everybody and handing it out to what could be 20, 30, 40, 50% fraud on some of this stuff. You, you have no idea because all we have is the tip of the iceberg. Anyway, be thankful for your theft and corruption. Uh, yeah. And, and Biden's approval rating is like 55%. Everyone loves this. Nobody has any questions about it at all. And of course, any deviance from uh, Lord Biden's decrees, that would be Neanderthal thinking. You are a pr- uh, primitive human, subhuman, really. If you uh, think you've uh, had enough of this crap and you'd rather think for yourself and act for yourself and assess risk for yourself and work for yourself. Joe Biden, of course, was asked about states like Texas and Mississippi and others saying they've had enough of this crap. They're opening up. We're not doing this mask mandate nonsense anymore. And he said that's Neanderthal thinking. That was the quote of the week. I think it's a big mistake. Look, I hope everybody's realized by now these masks make a difference. And the last thing, the last thing we need is Neanderthal (laughs) thinking that in the meantime, everything's fine. Take off your mask. Forget it. It still matters. I carry a card with me. I don't have it. I put it on my desk. As of last, as of yesterday, we had lost 511,874 Americans. And Never forget the card. Critical, 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 critical that they follow the science, wear a mask, and stay socially distant. It's coming off his nose. <laughs> and he keeps touching it, too. I cannot wait for the, for the first time that he says the N-word. Like a dementia onset. By the way, well, we'll have more dementia, loose racism coming up in a moment. Very bizarre moment with the Indian NASA engineer lady. Really weird. It's it's as though he was giving them a compliment, but it was also kind of race. It it is funny how his dementia brain very often goes to race in that way. It it just does. And uh, another update on the uh, on the race thing. I was going through uh, clips this morning in preparation for the show, and and I remembered that I had the him saying the N word clip still uploaded on the clips channel. I thought, oh, before I get rid of this, I, I have to check. Did the captions correctly caption this one too? Yes, even on our clips channel, the raw clip of Joe Biden talking <gasps> was captioned. Very good. I'm eager to hear N word, E D past tense N word. <laughs> yeah. No, but I I want him to say it with more intent, and I think it's coming. Maybe we're getting there, but this, this claim, the masks work, follow the science. They make a difference. Well, the masks don't make a difference. There's no correlation between states with mask mandates and better health outcomes. The worst states for per capita deaths have all had mask mandates since last spring. And, uh, and in fact, as you can see on this chart, our biggest case spikes have all been post mask mandate. There are a lot of variables in play here, but you can observe where mass compliance was on certain dates on this chart in June, the CDC was reporting there was 89% mass compliance in this country. Guess what happened after that? Cases spiked in October mass compliance actually increased to 92% and 93% according to national geographic and Harris polls uh, cases quadrupled after that. Now maybe you want to argue that the spikes would have been even worse if it wasn't for the masks. Well, explain to me how all of these states that have not had mask mandates this entire time don't have disproportionate case explosions. There's no conclusive evidence that masks work to stop the spread. There's not even evidence at all, really. It's a performative gesture to show everyone how much you care that doesn't have a lot of clear evidence to show for it. And again, I say that with all due respect to people who choose to wear them. That's fine. Ah, no, this, fuck you people. This authoritarian, this authoritarian follow the science. You're a bad person if you don't. The evidence just is not there. I'm sorry. It is not. It's not. Yeah, absolutely not. <sighs> Jen Psaki is, uh, is sticking with it, though. I love this. She says Biden didn't call people Neanderthals. He was simply describing the Neanderthal behavior that they're engaging in. How does comparing someone to a Neanderthal help convince them to change course and get on board with your public health message? The behavior of a Neanderthal, just to be very clear, um, the behavior of. He simply has was asked, uh, asked the American people to abide by wearing masks for 100 days. We're at about day 40. Are we at day 40? Around there, 60 more days. Uh, that's what he's asking. And he's certainly hopeful that businesses and people across the country will continue to do that. I kind of feel bad for her. I mean, she's insufferable, but she probably goes home every night and drinks a bottle of wine. She's like, I hate my job defending this demented old kook. What do you mean? That sounds very fulfilling. 
She oh, sounds like a very a fulfilled, independent woman. If that's her, uh, if that's her game. Did she not have kids so she could do this job? I don't know. Is, does she? I don't know what her situation is. But you oh, always have that. to wonder what factor Blonde's disease might play. Yeah, I think <laughs> she has kids. Uh, I, I've I've heard some people replying to this this week. You know, if we if we said to Jen Saki, you know, that's dumb bitch behavior right there, Jen Saki. <laughs> the the behavior of dumb bitch. I'm not saying that you're a dumb bitch. <laughs> I'm saying it's the behavior of a dumb bitch. She might have a few objections to that claim. Notice in there, she she said though, uh, "Oh, just we'll just finish out the hundred days of masking. That's all we're asking for." Come back to this on May first when Jen Psaki stands up at that podium on May first, which is right about the hundred days, and says, "That's it." Hundred days masked up. We defeated the virus. It's over. No more masking. I will eat my words, but I'm telling you that day is not coming. Jen Psaki never will never say that. Gonna come. She has two kids. Oh, that's right. yeah. I, I I should have known that. I remember that. So, uh, you know who's really offended though by Joe Biden's commentary and Jen Psaki's sort of tacit sticking up for it is Neanderthals, and yeah. Joe Biden has yet to apologize mm. to Neanderthals who are continually mocked and disrespected by this language. That doesn't look like unity to me. They've been striving for equality this whole time. Wasn't that a Geico commercial or something? Those were classic ads, yeah. I can't remember when they last when they stopped running them. But the whole idea with Geico was it's so easy a caveman could do it. And the caveman guy was always offended by being belittled yeah. in that way. <laughs> uh, whoever did the edit, I think it was uh, it was credited on screen there uh, at Emma Mitchum on Twitter. Well done on that one. Meanwhile, uh, Joe Biden and the Democrats keep obscuring the truth and, and milking whatever false narratives they can. Uh, the border has been uh, flooded by unaccompanied children. That continues to be a problem. Who could have foreseen such a thing? And uh, not just unaccompanied children, but children who are being transported with people other than their parents, which current U.S. legal precedent says they, they have to be separated from those people at the border until you can figure out who the hell these people are. But then they just go to relatives over the border and all of these people have relatives over the border. There's been a lot of, uh, yeah, there's been a lot of catch and release type stuff going on. And of course they don't care at the border. If you have coronavirus, <laughs> that's, that's the other piece of this scandal. Even if you're a positive diagnosis, welcome in, go right ahead. Uh, that's really how you know that we're being conned on this coronavirus stuff. In addition to the flu stuff, in addition to all the other pieces of evidence, coronavirus is a non-issue as far as border entry is concerned. And uh, anyway, so we had talked about this prior. The Washington Post had said, hey, uh, migrant facilities for children are uh, in operation at the border. Remember, it's not kids in cages anymore. Now it's migrant facilities for children, even though it was kids in, kids in cages just a few months ago. Just in case you don't necessarily trust the benevolence of our Lord and Savior Joe Biden at the border, and maybe you'd like to evaluate these migrant facilities for children yourself, or maybe have a media investigator go in and evaluate the conditions there. That's not going to happen. The daily caller wanted to visit one of these facilities and a facility spokesperson says the office of refugee resettlement is not hosting media tours of unaccompanied children facilities due to you guessed it, the coronavirus pandemic. If media tours resume, we will send a media advisory. They say an ABC news reporter was also told that they will not be allowed to tour the facilities responding to questions at a press conference on Monday. Uh, Homeland security secretary Alejandro Mayorkas said uh, he would look into it. And Jen Psaki pledged. She will definitely circle back on the issue as well. So you can be <laughs> confident. Amazing. Just how amazing how the coronavirus pandemic is always just this magical servant to democratic uh, agenda priorities, democratic conveniences. Uh, um, wow. What a magical virus this is. And there are a lot of continued capital raid narratives that are being perpetuated and upheld as well. This Brian Sicknick situation that we've discussed several times in recent weeks continues to be mysterious. This was the Capitol police officer who was allegedly 
at least at first, bludgeoned by a fire extinguisher Mm -hmm. in a bloody, violent, brutal melee death. And then it turns out that he actually went back to the Capitol Police office and texted his brother that he was fine. He just got pepper sprayed, but then he had a stroke. And now the investigators are trying to say that pepper spray caused the stroke. And they're trying to figure out a way to pin the murder on a guy who used some pepper spray. Anyway, FBI Director Christopher Wray spoke before a Senate committee this week to discuss various security breakdowns at the Capitol raid. And he refused to disclose the cause of Brian Sicknick's death or even to confirm that there is a known cause. He wouldn't say anything. There's been conflicting reports about his cause of death. Have you determined the exact cause of death? And as soon as there's information that we can appropriately share, uh, we want to be able to do that. But at the moment, the investigation is still ongoing. Uh, so does that mean since the investigation is going on, you have not determined the exact cause of the death? That means we can't yet uh, d- disclose a, a cause of death at this stage. But you have determined the cause of death. I, I didn't say that. We're not at a point where we can disclose uh, or confirm okay. a cause of death. Okay, if they haven't confirmed the cause of death at this point in time, they're never going to. That body is uh, like toast by now. Two months. Yeah. yeah. January 6th to now March 7th. What possible further investigation could be necessary on that body? (sighs) Bottom line, they know exactly what it was. There is somebody who knows exactly what killed this guy. And the reason I'm sure it was a heart attack or a stroke or something totally unrelated to these events that had nothing to do with him supposedly getting bludgeoned, of which there is no evidence. No, nothing happened to this guy. He died from a totally unrelated cause. You're all getting fleeced. It, it is absolutely not the case that the cause of death is not yet known. The only thing that is not yet known, uh, or, or I should say, the, the official cause has not been manufactured yet. That's that's really what we're dealing with here. We know what killed him there. I'm comfortable speculating. There is an effort behind the scenes to try to take what we can provably say about his death and pin it on somebody to make a murder case of it. And when you listen to the investigators speaking anonymously with CNN, it's exactly what they're saying. Mm -hmm. They're saying things like we have a suspect, but we don't yet know how or what charges to bring. (laughs) Okay. So you have dead guy. It's months later. You know how he died. You have some idea of a person who did something to him because you've identified the suspect. All you're telling me then is you're, manufacturing a way that you can tie this so-called suspect's behavior to the death. I bet you a million dollars that he was cremated. I don't, that might be out there. Who knows? Yeah. That information might be out there. Let's see. So Let's we'll see. keep an eye on this. This continues to, to be uh, an absolutely outrageous scandal. And then, uh, of course, uh, Capitol Police have also asked for 2,000 National Guardsmen to remain at the Capitol for another 60 days. Two months. Cremated. Is that true? So, the, okay, so there's nothing to investigate as far as his body. It's gone. What the hell are we, what is going on here? We are you know being, what's going on. I, I do, but it's just at every step watching our country be conned repeatedly like this and half of the country be like, yeah, it's totally normal. What's wrong with you? Conspiracy theorists. Are you nuts? I know. I, it's, you know it's, how I knew he was cremated? Because you I, can predict that. It's, it makes yeah, make sense. I, yeah. I love true crime podcasts and I was just listening to one last week. This guy killed five of six of his ex-wives and he had them all cremated so that there could be no long-term cause of death investigation. Pretty smart. Did he do the cremation himself or did he? Uh... No, he got them to change their will before he murdered them all. Oh, okay. Interesting. He just Over like 50 years. He so. sat down with all of his ex-wives and thought, you know. I really don't think we should be buried. I think we should do cremate. If they were his ex-wives, why would they give a shit what he thinks about about that? Well, they were. He was married to them when he killed them. Oh wait. Okay. So wait, wait, wait. You're saying he it, killed? He didn't kill them at the same time. He killed them in sequence over decades. Is that what you're saying? Over fifty years. Yeah. And he got away with all these murders. No, he's being tried for them now. Well, he got away for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of insurance. I thought you were saying that he just did this. He decided one day, all right, I've tried six women. Oh, no. (laughs) No. (laughs) Had enough. I'm going to kill them all. I'm going to convince them that cremation is wise. (laughs) No. In succession. Anyway. Okay. So Capitol Police are asking for a National Guard presence of thousands of troops for the coming months. 
And uh, Nancy Pelosi says this is necessary to protect capital business from all the president's men out there. Between COVID, where we need to have vaccinations more broadly in the capital so that many more people can come here and do their jobs, uh, and uh, the threat of um, of all the president's men out there, uh, we have to we have to ensure with our security uh, that we are safe enough to do our job. There isn't even one president's man out there because the whole place is on military lockdown with armed guards and razor wire. It's unbelievable. They continue to perpetuate this lie that they're under constant threat when they were hardly under threat two months ago. Uh, 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 this is it's amazing to watch. And, and Swalwell won't give it up either. He's he's suing Trump and several Trump allies, including Mo Brooks, one of his fellow congressmen. On the grounds that they that they aided and abetted and incited the mob on January 6th and all the injury and destruction that followed. As I mentioned, the most interesting part of Swalwell's complaint is that Swalwell, quote, prepared himself for possible hand to hand combat as he took off his jacket and tie and searched for makeshift instruments of self-defense. The lawsuit says, which I find very interesting. Oh, man, how victimizing it must feel to have to search through your room for makeshift instruments of self-defense. That sounds exactly like what you're trying to impose on the rest of the country. I bet you would have liked to have a gun that day, Eric Swalwell, just in case anybody raided your office and meant to do harm to you or your staff. That's I'm, I'm supposed to believe that's common sense. Your place of work or your residence is under. Uh, is under some sort of attack, some sort of intrusion, some sort of raid. I thought the proper answer is huddle up in a corner, grab what you can and call the police. Yeah, exactly. That's not victimization. That's what he wants. In in response, Trump spokesperson Jason Miller said in a statement that uh, Swanwell is a low life with no credibility. <laughs> and this lawsuit, of course, will go nowhere other than... Uh, Ironically, to disprove the entire premise of the impeachment, the reason this will go nowhere is because this lawsuit will not meet the legal standard of incitement, which I would say is justification to say that the entire premise of the second impeachment is bunk. Then it was not incitement. Yeah, you can't prove not. incitement. Yeah. It was not incitement. I know that you know it's a political question in the context of impeachment, but I just get annoyed. Don't use legal terms if you don't mean the legal definition. So we'll see. And then you got brave Al Green from Texas. The premise for these warnings of these ongoing or the premise for the ongoing military occupation at the Capitol is they find one crazy guy on some message board talking about how there's going to be further attacks. Mm -hmm. And they use that to justify this continued lockdown and their continued victimization. This time they claimed that they had QAnon intelligence that there would be further insurrection on March 4th. That didn't happen. Now, March 20th is the uh, prophecy day of real insurrection. And Trump's it's never going to happen. These people are delusional. <laughs> it's not. It, it isn't. But Al Green, Al Green sits bravely on the Capitol steps in defiance by himself because nobody else can go to the Capitol steps. He's fighting off imaginary insurrectionists that you can't see, but they would be there if they could. Listen to these quotes. Uh, Al Green says, quote, I decided that I just would not leave. I think that it's important for me personally as a matter of principle just to be here and send a message to peoples who would do harm that we won't be moved. He added, I love my freedom and I'm not going to allow this freedom to be taken away. Ironic, considering your party exists to do that. Uh, Safety is not the issue. Sending the message is what's important, he said. And I'm here to send the message. To who? Who the hell got that message? There's nobody there. You're protected by thousands of troops, walls, razor wire, guns. Nobody's there to threaten you. And I'm, you could delete every single security measure there and still nobody would be there to threaten you. It's unbelievable. Are there is. Buying this? I guess so. <laughs> it's there was a case. Uh, there was a, one, one uh, a Washington Post reporter had posted that he found a guy named Ken and Ken had said 
that March 20th is now the date. This, these are the sources. And then we run with this. Yeah, a guy named Ken on the internet said Trump insurrectionists are coming on March 20th. So we have to lock down the entire Capitol and block the American people from their own uh, house of government. I'm surprised that they didn't employ deep fake technology. A lot of Trump. that is still it's still easy to identify, though, especially on like higher resolution know. screens. Those Tom Cruise videos I saw were very convincing. How do you think they would use it if they could? I don't know, like him blowing Putin or something, getting peed on. <laughs> they would have made, they would have manufactured the P tape. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. There is a term for these conspiracy theorists, though. Did you see this? Mm -mm. This uh, term went viral over the weekend. It's called Blue Anon. Blue Anon, oh, yeah. as in believer of belie a believer of Democratic Party hoaxes. So bl uh, Blue Anon followers believe such nonsense as uh, Russian collusion, Jesse Smollett's claims, Ukrainian quid pro quo, the Covington Catholic smear, Brett Kavanaugh sexual assault claims, <laughs> those sorts of things. And the term Blue Anon was posted on Urban Dictionary on Friday and it went viral until it was taken down sometime last night or this morning. No explanation that I've seen. It was just yeeted from Urban Dictionary. <laughs> Urban Dictionary is, of course, supposedly a user edited site, except for the ideologues who edit it behind the scenes. <laughs> I saw Anthony Brian Logan tweeting out earlier. He's like, it's weird that you can post this on <laughs> Urban Dictionary, but not Blue Anon. And it's just the hard R N word. And there's lots of <laughs> entries. Think of all the Internet definitions for the N word that you could come up with. Those are all fine. No, do yeah. not make fun of the Democratic <laughs> Party or their or they're faithful. Ah, uh, yeah. Is Dirty Sanchez on there. Yeah, I had to consult it again for Rusty Trombone the other day. Oh yeah. I forget where that was referenced, but the uh, yeah, there was need for a Rusty Trombone definition. The definition is: it does not matter how you do it; it's a fecal mustache. <laughs> the <laughs> methods, the methods don't matter. However you achieve it, a dirty Sanchez is a dirty Sanchez. <laughs> you can do it to yourself. You can do it to someone else. It doesn't have to be direct application. You yeah. know. Okay. I like that. High that's, bar there. That's very medical. Fecal mustache. Fecal mustache. Yeah. Well, if you think that Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi are, are saving us from Corona apocalypse and QAnon insurrection, there's another week's worth of uh, entries of dementia for both of them. So on Thursday afternoon, Joe was speaking with NASA engineers about Ooh. the recent Mars landing. And he was speaking with Swati Mohan, the guidance and controls operations lead. And Biden immediately commented that Indians like her are taking over the country. Pajit's like you, <laughs> Swati. Let me find the clip. Here we go. Hey, Doc. How are you? I'm doing very well, Mr. President. I just Thank want you, you for, to know. For taking the time to speak with us. Are you kidding me? What an honor this is. This is an incredible honor. And it's amazing. Indian of descent Americans are taking over the country. You, my vice president, my speechwriter, Vanai, <laughs> I tell you what. But thank you. You guys are incredible. Okay. Uh I hardly even edited that. I did have to clip it just a little bit for time, but you can go and watch it. He went immediately from greeting to, hey, you foreigners are everywhere. <laughs> yeah, really. And also note, he admits in there that Kamala is Indian. I, I was yeah. reliably informed that she's a black woman who has connections to slavery, implicitly at least. I guess not. And Biden also appeared at the virtual meeting of the House Democratic Caucus after his <laughs> after his speech. He said he was ready to take questions and the White House staff just cut his feed. Answers like that are, are probably why. This is what it sounded like. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm happy to take questions if that's what I'm supposed to do, Nance, whatever you want me to do. Nope. That's the end of the stream. Oh, God. Oh my Thank God, you for this joining. Is so embarrassing. <laughs> And uh, I really appreciate no. your tips on squatting while you poop. It's really helped me, <laughs> Indian people. The Get uh, my old man bowel movements going. Why don't you guys leave those dogs alone? We can't we can't support <laughs> the charities enough to help them out. Come on. All right. Uh, I guess they are leaving them alone. They're starving. That's really the problem. They need to stop oh. leaving them alone so much. Help the Indian dogs. Yeah. 
It's so bad that even even Blonde's cold, tiny heart finds sympathy for the Indian dogs. They're so skinny. Now, I went back and looked at the original post of the the White House original post of that clip. They cut that off from the end of the video. I don't have it for you here, but just just so people can see, they cut off that section where Joe offers to answer questions. It's going to open up a lot of hearts and a lot of doors for us tomorrow to do the many more things we know we have to do. So I want to thank you all. I really mean it from the bottom. I want to thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then it's just gone. So they clipped that off. And this segment also went viral for uh, this bizarre moment Nancy Pelosi had. She was introducing Joe Biden to the House Democratic Caucus. And she described using open Biden as a password to open doors. In order to open these doors, we do not say open Sesame. We say open Biden. That's our magic word. (laughs) Open Biden. I love it. (laughs) Now, there is a little more context to this. That clip was going crazy on Twitter. It's not quite what it appears to be. Because that sounded really weird, even for Nancy to me. I thought, are they really are our are, are members of the House going around and saying open Biden to pass through doors or something? No, what she, she was telling a story about how her grandkids admired Joe Biden so much that they said that in place of open sesame. It was like a passcode, you know, but she said that her kids were doing this six or seven years ago. So I'm going to guess probably not true, but that's. That's what she says. In any case, she's describing behavior of her grandchildren, not her or her House Democratic colleagues. Mm. Decide for yourself if you think it's weird or not. Regardless, this video has the typical Biden YouTube ratio. 329 upvotes, 12,000 down for the most popularly elected (sighs) president of all time. Comments, of course, disabled. You cannot comment or read any comments, which, of course, would be great fun on a video like this. Anyway, I do for a break. <laughs> we'll just leave it like Biden answering questions there. We'll just move on abruptly. Oh, God. Ugh. I just Let's, can't. I don't, I don't want to do this every week. It, it is embarrassing. It's embarrassing to me. This is nothing like the Trump cringe that we were exposed to. And the irony of this is they acted like he was the most embarrassing president we've ever had. And now we're ushering an era of just insane old man dementia yeah uh, trump had his cringe obviously and we we went through it a lot on the show yeah for trump i think it was just speaking too quickly without thoroughly thinking what you're saying in the case of biden and often nancy pelosi it it does come off as actual absent-mindedness not just being loose-lipped it 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 is as though they are not present mentally yeah that's why it's so painful yeah too old Today's March 7th, right? Gosh, I still hate this new super chat. Uh, over on Trovo, we got C2K and Darth Jones renewing subscriptions. Thank you, guys. Chubby Stubby gifting subscriptions as well. Appreciate it, guys. And Chubby Stubby with a cash bang. Whatever that is, I still don't understand Trovo, but I appreciate you guys building the community over there. Uh, DLive has basically nuked our community, but I think I can still open what meager treasure chest resources there are. Let me do that. If you How guys are hanging out on, uh, gosh, I had yeah. high hopes for D live. Yeah, I know I sent, and I did send them that email saying I tried to be polite and say, listen, you have to, you really have to understand why people went to D live. And that is to avoid exactly this sort of YouTube censorship. You guys are now worse than YouTube on that front. And I really think this is a shame. And I think it's dumb from somebody who's been trying to build something on your platform. They never responded. And every other technical <laughs> issue I've ever had with them, they respond quickly and they fixed it for me. The second I have some concerns about saying that anyone, th- this is the standard on DLive now. It's not just you can't say edgy things as they determine. You can't talk about news or politics and be monetized on DLive, period. You can't even have the most milk toast CNN opinions and talk politics on DLive. The idea that they would just demonetize an entire genre. Meanwhile, I don't know what their stance is on, say, cam girls painting on their boobs or yeah. someone playing video games and calling each other N word, F word, whatever. You just they can't probably talk thought politics. it was more fair to demonetize everybody 
rather than demonetized based on political opinion. But the effect is the same for us. So I don't really care. Yeah. And Trovo has been, has been doing all right. And of course we are considering our options and talking with people behind the scenes. Don't worry. There will be viable alternatives to YouTube. Just got to coast and uh, find the next place to survive, which the pieces are moving. I remain pretty optimistic and confident, but for now we're kind of in a weird spot. You good over there? Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, Daniel Kunkel says the Dems are going to be hitting us with their common sense gun legislation because shall not be infringed is open to interpretation somehow by now if you can and prepare for noncompliance. We're all preparing for noncompliance, aren't we? Yeah, it does sound like that is up fairly soon on their priority, their um, agenda of priorities after this stimulus package. As I said, I've been saying for a few weeks now, if you've been on the fence about getting an AR rifle or or any sort of firearm, but particularly stuff that's likely to be attempted to be banned or restricted. You can, st- there are still build kits available. There are still complete rifles available. The prices are inflated beyond what they would have been a year and a half ago, but they're still attainable mm-hmm. and I would highly, and they're still out there. You don't even have to wait. So a lot of that stuff can ship or be picked up shipped to your FFL. Of course, ATF listener. I'm not advo- follow all federal gun laws, Whoops. but they're still available. You can, you can get that stuff. So, just, you know, PSA to people who are on the fence. Now's the time if you've been on the fence. Um, Mojack 420. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Um, started my new job. So here are some shekels, you money grubbers. Grabbers, oh, thank money you. grabbers. Rocky Mountain Monk. Well, no, the te- no, technically, you, I think it is money grubbers, but I just say grabbers. I don't care. <laughs> I think grubbers is correct, but I don't give a shit. Bethany W. Um, we're setting up a listener meetup. For New England listeners at the end of March, need a headcount? FMI, please email Matt your contact info before March 17th. March 17th, we'll send you updates about the meetup. Cool. I, who's that, Matt? Because that's not me. <laughs> uh, I am not a coordinator of this. But uh, if you guys, if you if people do want, I guess if you guys do want to email me, I can connect emails. Or if you're in the New England area and you're looking for meetup people, head on over to the community page of the website. You can find boston or new england area people in the community page and you can send an email out there and get involved rocky mountain monk uh little known fact eric swalwell is a black belt in fart kundo kwando <laughs> I, I really missed an opportunity to make another fart joke there another That's fart true. edit didn't i dang it uh bill biz says blonde i've enjoyed your interview series would love to see you consider interviewing laura towler and way of the world that is a fantastic idea I love Laura Towler. She's so well-spoken and adorable. Um, I don't know how to contact her. I'm not familiar. I don't know if I've heard of oh, her. Oh, she's this, um, uh, what, what is her group called? I, I can't quite remember. It's her and Mark Collette. Something Patriots. Hmm. I can't remember. Um, but she's fantastic. I, I love her work. So if anybody has a, a direct line to Laura Towler, I'd love to, to, to interview her. And Way of the World also is fantastic. So Laura Towler, Way of the World. I'd like to do um, Devin Stack as well, who's blackpilled. Oh, I think I should. Some people sent me some email contact for him. I should forward that to you. I haven't done that yet. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm a YouTuber, but I'm like, hey, audience, can you hook me up with these? <laughs> well, not everyone has their contact information public, you know? Yeah, that's true. Amber, the drunken pickle maker. My son is deployed right now. I think it would be awesome if he got a bar of soap sent to him. Mm. I'll have to buy in hopes a donated bar makes, makes it to him. Or send to him directly. But uh, thank you to your son and thank you to your family. And if you are considering Hero, yeah, give him a try. I, uh, I got some with Hero. I, they sent me some sample stuff, what, a year and a half back when we started doing the promo. And I just started buying it because I like the stuff and I like the company, of course, but it, it is a high quality product. So uh, it's definitely worth checking out. Patrick Porter, as your resident person of color, I presume, and representation of the Black Council, I'd like to extend an honorary pass for blonde to say the gamer word, <laughs> Matt, you too, but no hard R's. I get I get the hard R. Matt. Wow. Thank you. Wasn't I the first person mm. to say the N word on this show? Yeah, remember. but you said white N word. Yeah, I said Jack Conti is not a white N word. Mm-hmm. To really to make it clear that Sargon was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Nagger. <laughs> Careful. We don't Chris- want any more nagging around here. <laughs> Christoph Harper says, remember that Susan has determined that some people can be banned until there are no more threats of violence yeah. in the country. We're gonna yeah. get to that in a minute, actually, with the Texas stuff. 
Um, let's just do a few more. Uh, Disturbed 2K7. Sup, nerds. Doc said I have depression last week. I want to say it's important to reach out and tell someone that you're going through it. Please don't suffer alone. It's like hell. Um, that is true. And seek therapy. And it's okay to talk about it. And so many people, like in this world, I was talking to my brother about this, and he's like, in this world and with everything that's going on, don't you think it'd be more bizarre to not suffer from anxiety and depression? Yeah. You, you yeah. really should give yourself a break on that front. And uh, yeah, uh, if, you, if you feel the need to talk to somebody, please do. Family, of course, is, is the best option if you don't have that. Um, I think, well, I guess I'm not qualified to give advice, but for me, if it was me, I would, a family is first and, and professional would be second in, in my, in the way I would handle this, but you know. Get professional. Home. You think professional first? Yeah, totally. Hmm. I as some, from somebody that constantly burdens her family with mental health issues, I can tell you that seeking professional advice takes a lot of pressure off of your personal relationships. Hmm. Also, okay, they so have to listen to you. Go to your family and tell they're annoyed. Then <laughs> don't do what I did. Yeah, just go go to go to a therapist. First. No, it, it, it's a serious topic. I should treat it seriously. Above all, don't feel ashamed for what's happening to you, especially in this sort of. Uh, environment or circumstance and treat yeah. yourself well and give yourself a break as we've been talking about on a week by week basis this is the biggest mountain of bullshit ever shoveled upon society i can't believe what we've gone through yeah. in the last year you would never convince me of it this time last and here we are so it and it, the challenges hit people differently so whatever the challenges uh, that have come your way are don't don't feel ashamed of them yeah and don't self-medicate with drugs and alcohol yeah, yeah. um I bought PN says, I wish I had something clever to say. Keep up the Sandy safe spacing. <laughs> we're, mm. we're trying. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Let's just do two more. Uh, Kevin Brait. Brait. I don't know how to say that. I'm sorry, Kevin. Uh, we need to stop the doctors from taking over. Has anybody tried apples? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've I, I heard good things about one a day. Yeah. Um, 2A education. Hey, thanks again for another great show. I think you're a little bit... Jump in the gun on that one. Thanks for we tuning could, in. It could man. totally go and south, to a As always, he does. Uh, he's doing good streams on Second Amendment and gun stuff. He actually had a, a, some videos for me about German firearms after last week's discussion. Oh, really? He's got a good German guns collection. So if you appreciate fine German engineering and craftsmanship and firearm construction, two a edu channel. Just a couple over on uh, Tippy Stream. Samantha J says, "Hey, I'm from SoCal. I went to a large indoor mall recently and decided to test going maskless. I put on my best RBF, oh, resting bitch face. That's what that must <laughs> be. My best resting bitch face, and I walked through the mall and through a store. No one bothered me. I was the only one, though. I'm a longtime fan. Thanks for your hard work. Well, that must have been a hell of an RBF, I would say, if nobody messed with her. But no, this is it." it you will, at least in my experience, you'll find that a lot. I've been the only one in a store and environment several times, yet I've been confronted five or six times. Hardly ever. Yeah. yeah. So for the most part, uh, what was the way it was phrased the other day? Someone asked on Twitter, are you wearing a mask because you're actually afraid of the virus or are you wearing a mask because you're afraid of how other people will treat you if you don't? Once you get over that fear of how people will treat you, uh, you're in you're in good shape. Although as a woman, the mask hassling the mask hassling I have seen is generally weak men going after women. Exactly. Yeah. So maybe you'd be at higher risk for confrontation than I would. I've not had I've had a couple employees confront me. I've never had like a a a, sh a store shopper or just a random person confront me. People anyway, leave me alone. Yeah. Mostly. Uh, thank you for fighting the fight. Samantha and uh, all the best in SoCal lobster man says I'm considering an AR 15 purchase, but I don't really want to build one myself. Which manufacturer should I consider and how much should I be willing to spend any specific features features you'd recommend having? I appreciate your oops kit tip. Yeah, you can send me an email if you want more specifics, but this just for anybody in the audience, it really depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for just something that's serviceable at the lowest possible price, I'd go with a manufacturer like Palmetto state armory palmettostatearmory.com totally fine rifles for purposes like mine that are having fun at the range and having something that will defend you if you have to if you want high-end uh you know military build something that's going to last 20 years in the desert and never need a drop of oil in theory uh all, you know whatever 
you can go with a high-end manufacturer, Bravo Company, Daniel Defense. Um, there are several others that, that you could go with. Um, but but uh, you don't necessarily have to build yourself. All, you can get all of those complete rifles from those manufacturers. The cheapest Palmetto State builds are still selling for something like 800 bucks. You can get those shipped to an FFL in your area. If you are looking, the one thing I would advise for a new buyer, um, uh, regardless of what sort of uh, rifle build you're looking for, get something with a decent handguard. Get something that's got, say, an M-Lock handguard or at least a handguard that's going to allow for attachments. The cheapest mil-spec stuff. If you want to add grips, lights, other features that might be advantageous for a defense weapon, get something with a decent handguard. Get something that you can pop some attachments on fairly easily and you don't have to actually swap out the entire handguard to do that. That would be my advice. But of course, uh, I'm not the best advice giver either. So send me an email or um, ask an expert. Danny from Montana says, it was. I was really hoping the Rona thing would have hit the, uh, or would thin out the hobo favelas here in Austin. Shock of shocks, they've gotten bigger. Matt, have you bought any silver yet? The premium of silver isn't that high. Same for ammo. Did you all know elephants have tits? I did not, but I guess elephants are mammals. That makes sense, right? Big Bear told me. I have not been. I have not made any kind of precious metals purchase yet. But as as you guys are aware, if you've listened, I have been considering. So I've been. I've had some emails, and I'm considering my options. And um, I've been told burst gold is a fantastic choice if you want to do that. David M. Says, uh, hey guys, can't listen tonight, but extremely excited to announce that I got engaged with enough patience and faith in God. Anything is possible. By the way, Matt, if you are interested in some fun Bigfoot stuff, look up the Survivor Man episodes on it. God bless. Well, congratulations to you. That is great news. And all the best to your lady and your forthcoming family. Excellent to hear. I've not, I'm not familiar with that, but I will check it out. I also heard that in the state of Oklahoma, the state of Oklahoma has a bounty on Bigfoot. Upped it to $2 million, but you have to okay. capture Bigfoot unharmed. You can't shoot Bigfoot anyway. Okay. Let's hop back into the news. Let me, uh, okay. Leave my place here so I don't forget. And we'll come back to it. Where did we leave? Off? Oh, it's, uh, it's Cuomo time, isn't it? Oh, let's be quick on oh, these. Okay. now there's, there are what? Five Cuomo accusers now. Yeah, these accusations are even more ridiculous than the previous, but two more women have come forward this week to accuse Cuomo of sexually harassing behavior, sexually harassing behavior, including a former press aide who described struggling to free herself from his repeated hugs and a young assistant who now says he left her feeling like, quote, just a skirt. Womp womp. I know. Um, Former press aide Karen Hinton endured, quote, a very long, too too long, too tight, too intimate embrace from Cuomo, Cuomo in a dimly lit Los Angeles hotel room in December 2000. What is she doing in a dimly lit? The hug was too tight. That's what we're going with. The too hug 20 years tight. ago was too tight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The other new accuser, Annalise, Annalise, I, a policy and operations aide who worked for the governor from... 2013 to 2015 said he'd behaved inappropriately well on the job in Albany. He called her sweetheart and asked if she had a boyfriend. And then he touched her lower back during an event and kissed her hand and asked her if she was dating anyone. Okay. So somewhat similar accusations to the prior asked about sexual history did touch that was unwanted or inappropriate. This is all old man stuff. I don't, I don't know what to say. And as our caller correctly pointed out on Wednesday, I think this is all just a cover because of the nursing home scandal. Yeah. Or was that a chatter on Sunday? I can't remember. We might've mentioned that on Sunday. Wouldn't you rather people think that you're like 20% a sleazy old man rather than a murderer of all the grandmas? To that point, there's even more evidence this week that he not only, I mean, not only did he shove the Corona positive grandmas back into the nursing homes, but there was an effort to cover up the numbers to protect them from federal investigation in theory, to protect his forthcoming book sales. The nursing home stuff looks even worse than ever. And yet all that's being talked about, including a lot on this show, even admittedly is the accuser stuff. But the reason I don't want to, and the sausage, but the reason I don't want to go into the nursing home stuff too deep is because we've been talking about that for like half a year. 
Yeah. This, this is news to people who watch CNN. This is not necessarily news to audiences like ours. We've known this for a long time. And, uh, you know, as, as we mentioned, Andrew Cuomo is very short on defenders right now, people willing to stick up for him. This particular story gives us some insight into what a creepy Cuomo moment looks like, but also someone who's actually defending him. Uh, the only person who has come to his defense is this woman who was told to eat the whole sausage at a lunch several years ago. I didn't know about this clip last week where I would have played it, but just in case you hadn't seen it yet. Thank you. I don't know if I should eat the whole sausage in front of you, but I'm definitely going to eat it. My daughter, Michaela. Hello. Nice to meet you. I think we're going to be here a while. Yeah. We might be here a while. Now there's a lot of pressure on me to eat this. Oh, yeah, there is. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be on this side. Now, interestingly... Some of the defense was, well, Cuomo's there with his daughter. Like, how creepy could it be? I don't know. I kind of feel the opposite way. Not that this is a crime, but I think it is weird that you would make sexual jokes to a woman who is about your daughter's age in the presence of your daughter. It just seems odd to me. Uh, it, is it criminal? Is it impeachment worthy? Is it? No, he's just creepy old man. Yeah. Nonsense. Well, this clip was from the 2016 New York State Fair. It has uh, reemerged in the context of the current scandal. This, the sausage girl is Beth uh, Cefalu. We'll go with that. She was a local reporter at the time. On Monday morning, she tweeted in part, I was not pressured or harassed. This is two people enjoying one event, the one event, the New York State Fair, that gives them a little more freedom to be informal. This is why people hate the media, misleading headlines and one-sided articles, twisting reality. It's really sad that any media will turn fun at the fair into some sleazy scandal that it wasn't. So she's coming to Cuomo's defense. Uh, I, it, it, I can see, I can look at this and see how this would be somewhat loose support for the the themes of the other claims like this is a guy who just gets kind of weirdly inappropriate in public settings which is the nature of the other claims except for the hotel room in 2000 but a lot of this stuff was he said something or touched me kind of lightly and i didn't like it in any case that is the reason that uh major new york politicians are calling for cuomo to resign so cuomo this week did a press conference in which he apologized Again, beyond the statement that we read last weekend for making anybody feel uncomfortable. But he says he's he never got physical with anybody and he says he's not going to resign. The calls for his resignation are increasing, though. Uh, today, a the New York State Senate Majority Leader Andrea Stewart Cousins, who's a Democrat, is uh, now calling on Cuomo to step down. And New York State Assembly Speaker Carl Hasty or Heasty uh, has uh, agreed with that in a, in a, in a tweet today. And State Attorney I'm General Letitia James. Sorry, what? I'm conflicted about this. You can finish. Oh, I was just going to say Letitia James, the Attorney General, has not uh, appointed an investigator yet. We're still supposed to get that independent investigation. Well, we'll be waiting for updates from Letitia. <laughs> um, I'm conflicted about this. On the one hand, uh, they would have eviscerated Trump for this. They would have just destroyed him. Um, on the other hand, I, I kind of feel like these are bullshit accusations and I want him to be hung for his real crime, which is the nursing mm. home thing. Well, uh, we'll get, uh, I want to talk about the theories of why in just a moment. I, the, the only other thing I wanted to play was just, there was this great clip circulating this week on Twitter from Dave Rubin's account, because one of the things that Andrew Cuomo pledged from his press conference was that, that I'm here to help people. It's my job to help people. And of course, it was just a great callback to that famous Ronald Reagan line. I'm not in this business to make people uh, feel uncomfortable. I'm here to make them, to help them. The nine most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Just something to think <laughs> about when they pledge to help you. Maybe you'd be better off helping yourself. So as far as the theories about why, as you mentioned last week, uh, we had the chatter speculating that the idea is the Democrats see that his nursing home scandal is too hot. So they got to figure out a way to disappear him mm -hmm. without admitting to the nursing home scandal. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that that makes a lot of sense to me because 
these women are marching out as though they're following orders. I held mm-hmm. on to an improper hug accusation for 20 years. Really? Yeah, I'm pretty sure one of these chicks is like an old black lady, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm what? just saying. Like, you know, <laughs> who are you going to sexually harass? What, like, do you remember that Me Too chick that looks like a, she's like the pockmarked aboriginal? The Me Too lady, yeah. yeah. Uh, she okay. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Burke or uh, uh, what's Tina Tana? Uh, Burke it's something with something a like T. Tar- like Tarana or t- yeah, Tarana Burke. Yeah. Okay. I to just... your point, although I'm going to say this is specific to Tarana Burke. Uh, nobody, ain't nobody ever sexually harassed Tarana Burke. That has never mm-hmm. happened. Not once. Sorry, didn't happen. Yeah, just I just, you know, do I look at people and wonder if they're too ugly to be sexually harassed? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she hey, in fairness, uh, great smile. Tarana Burke. Great, great smile. Great sense of humor. I hear she's funny. Mm-hmm. Real funny. Um, and then I think that it's only like one old black lady. Is that I think maybe I'm wrong about this, but they're all like younger women that are pretty good looking and then it's like oh you mean she was old at the time of the alleged abuse no not that old let me see am i wrong about this i run a new show (laughs) research research before the show is paying (laughs) i know okay we'll we'll come back okay we'll circle back to this. yeah we'll circle back to that one but i i did want to talk about the why theory because that does seem plausible to me it it is a lot of people coming forward who are probably Democrats in their politics to the extent that they were former staffers or, you know, other factors. You have Democratic politicians now coming out to oust him. It seems to me like this is an effort of Democrats. And if I want to be charitable, I'll say it's because they have a principled opposition to sexual harassment and they have a principled belief in female mm-hmm. accusers. Maybe. But it does it does reek of a, uh, of a Democrat plot to get him out of office. Unless... You ask the certified theorizers of uh, Blue Anon. There is a Blue yeah. Anon theory about why this is happening. And uh, it's because, of course, Trump is behind all of this. So ousting Cuomo to replace him as governor would protect Trump from forthcoming legal action in New York because the New York governor could, of course, pardon a charged or convicted Trump because there's a big. <sighs> Parade of criminal charges coming against Trump. Just you wait and see. Latidia is going to drop the hammer any day. I'm wrong about this. Totally. I'm pretty <laughs> sure they're all young. Okay, so there was no Tarana Burke that was uh that was made up. But no, um, they're they're. I think they're all average looking. I, I I know what three of them look like. They're all like average looking younger women. You are fake news. All right. Hmm. Moving on. Tell me about <laughs> Texas trying to stop the censorship. I'm happy about this, but I'm also I'm also not super hopeful about it. I don't know. OK, so the Senate Bill 12 would prohibit social media companies from blocking, banning, demonetizing or otherwise discriminating against a user based on their viewpoint or their location within Texas. Sounds good, right? Hmm. It would apply to anyone who lives in, does business in or has social media followers in Texas. That's pretty key has followers in that's a big group of people under the proposal a person who feels they've been wrongly barred from a platform can file a claim in court the texas attorney general can also bring a claim on a person's behalf also important if a social media company fails to comply the bill stipulates that the court can impose quote daily penalties sufficient to secure immediate compliance there was a similar bill to this in 2019 that got blocked so Okay, and it's so it's it's just to be clear about where this stands. It's you put in the notes scheduled for first hearing before committee on Monday, so it has not even passed through committee yet. No, but the governor is out in favor of this, which isn't going to help this get through committee. (laughs) It's not going to happen. It'll be interesting to see. I presume the Texas legislature is controlled by Republicans. I don't know that. Uh, Yeah, there are a lot of leftists in Texas, though. Yeah, a lot of Beto's. No doubt. And this is this is a very interesting thing philosophically, because do I like the idea of appealing to the government with discrimination claims? No, not at all. I I, I really hate that idea, actually. Um, 
that said, them's the rules, right? Can I, yeah. if I could go back to a perfectly clean principled world where we could erase all of this stuff and allow the owners and operators of private businesses to conduct themselves and their businesses as they see fit, that's the world that I would want to live in, to be honest. But we don't live in that world. We live in a world where you can be, you can sue for discrimination based on all sorts of other characteristics. Yeah. That are somewhat arbitrarily chosen. Yet, if you are discriminated against for political ideology or viewpoint, that is generally not covered by most civil rights law. Why? Again, yeah. I, I'm not even, I hesitate to advocate that it should be, but increasingly it becomes clear to me like the purest principled world is much further away than the world of using their standards to our advantage. It's not necessarily what I want, but I feel so frustrated by this. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to continue to lay down for the continued abuse of people of conservative or libertarian or just unorthodox viewpoints all over the internet such that they can't talk anymore because these companies effectively hold monopolies on the, on the public square. Yeah, I know. I, I know. I'm not thrilled with this, but, um, uh, we have to use the avenues that are available to us, though. I, I get it. Yeah. And, and if this is the great standard that the left says we should have, if we should have the Equality Act, where it should be illegal to sever an employment relationship with a trans person or trans persons, uh, trans people should be federally protected to have access to the bathrooms that they want or to race little girls in middle school or whatever else. This seems to me like it's following that exact sort of principle. These are public accommodations, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube that are distrib- that are uh, discriminating against viewpoints that broad groups of Americans have what would be the difference between requiring a public facility to allow transgender people into transgender men into the girls bathroom versus forcing them to allow certain perspectives to be discussed yeah i don't see the difference on that front these are not necessarily standards i'd advocate but these are the standards of the world in which we live so it's a little bit of fighting fire with fire and uh I don't like the fire, but I'm also tired of taking L's from these people. I'm also tired of being browbeaten by these people. These are the standards you guys advocate. All right. You will die by these standards. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, that's good. That means that you're not willing to uh, die for your principles that you, that you'll, you'd rather win. Well, I think uh, in fairness, I think that a lot of their, I think that what they're doing in a lot of cases is borderline is bordering on abuse, especially in the context of the book censorship lately, Dr. Seuss and other stuff. The Dr. Seuss story I didn't want to get into because so many people have talked it to death. I didn't feel like I could add much. It's one thing for the the Seuss estate to stop publishing those books because they want to. It's quite another thing for eBay to ban Mm -hmm. third parties from reselling it. And have you seen this in Amazon too? Amazon has banned all sorts of books lately. I don't know if this is accurate, but I heard Abigail Schreier cite the statistic the other day. She said that Amazon controls 80% of the book market through direct sales or third party yeah. sales through their website, used book sales. These companies are creeping on total control of the exchange of ideas on the internet. It's not just that. Oh, I mean, what about uh, the virtual mandate that you have to have a social media presence in order to have certain jobs and, Mm. and do certain things. You you become immobilized by uh, being labeled as, um, as an extremist or having a bad reputation. Um, And I think that that really, really prevents people from moving freely in society and from doing what they want. It's just, I'll be fascinated to watch this case because I just, I just love watching the bouncing back and forth on the standard of private companies can do what they want. Yeah. Private companies can't do what they want when it comes to control of their own bathrooms, but they can do what they want when it comes to telling people that you're not allowed to express certain views on a speech platform. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. And I'll admit, I, I freely admit that some of the hypocrisy is my own on this because I'm sitting here entertaining the idea that perhaps private businesses can't do what they want. Perhaps there ought to be some sort of, government regulation of what sort of discrimination they're allowed to do. I I fully acknowledge that even my own view on this is not entirely consistent right now, but in in a marketplace where groups are, where companies are allowed to compete. Yes, that, that is the way it should be. But, but that ceases to exist because they have such a huge 
huge percent of the market share. Yeah. All of these companies, like without Google, what would we even have to use? <sighs> you got a, you got a lot of rebuilding to do. And yeah. uh, to that point on Google, YouTube has has banned Trump's speech from CPAC. We talk about what censored the censorship of the little guy just trying to say his piece does matter. It, it, mm-hmm. it matters on principle. It matters. Uh, and it should be protected as a value, not necessarily by force, but everyone should value that. But you talk about former presidents of the United States just not being able to speak on major platforms in this country. That's just it's insanity. YouTube uh, took down not only did they take down Trump's CPAC speech last weekend, they actually suspended the right side broadcasting network channel that had the biggest stream of the speech that I saw. Even before uh, Trump was speaking, I was watching, waiting for him to come on stage. And at that time, it was something like 400,000 people watching live on that stream. Jeez. And I'm sure during the speech, it was even higher. I wasn't paying attention to the numbers. Afterward, 4 million people watched it. And that was just Right Side Broadcasting Network's YouTube video of the speech. So millions more watched this thing. But um, that was until Thursday when YouTube took down and sus- uh, took down the video and suspended the right side broadcasting network. YouTube cited election misinformation. Now, presumably this was because Trump had said, among other things, we played some of it on the show. He was going to beat Democrats for the third time, implying that he had beaten them this last time. And he did also make some claims about states like Pennsylvania having more votes than voters. There were some claims of fact in there that you can dispute. Uh, the suspension of, of right side broadcasting is not permanent. It's it's two weeks. And right side says YouTube banned them for not adding, quote, countervailing viewpoints. So in other words, you can only play Trump's speech if you criticize Trump's speech. That's insane. Yeah. And if you ask Susan, the censorship will continue until morale improves. Recall that uh, YouTube, of course, joined the party of social media platforms to ban Trump after January 6th, though YouTube has implied or they've said it's not permanent, implying that Trump could return, but it's not going to be anytime soon. Susan says that she won't reinstate Trump until, quote, the risk of violence decreases. Whatever that means in their subjective arbitrary measurement. Speaking at a conference on Thursday, Susan Wiki Wiki said, quote, given just the warnings by the Capitol Police yesterday about a potential attack today. This was from March 4th, the originally foretold day of the second insurrection. I think it's pretty clear that elevated violence risk still remains. Well, <laughs> if you can just tangentially tie any YouTube video to violence, all Black Lives Matter videos need to be removed immediately. All Antifa videos need to be removed immediately. And again, what is the source for these warnings of forthcoming violence? It's Ken from the Washington yeah, Post. Really. It's a guy. Am I supposed to believe that if I say, hey, I generally support Trump and also violence is cool and <laughs> violence on March 15th would be cool that you're supposed to delete the accounts of really anyone of a high profile who is Trump aligned when Trump has had actually no association or participation with me whatsoever. You're going to allow one person to dictate what's available to be said or heard on the internet. Are you nuts? Bottom line, if that's the threshold for a threat, um, Trump is never coming back, but normal is never coming back and really speech on the internet is never coming back. If that's the standard. So we will see where that goes. Uh, I want to, just a couple stories left. I'll get into them because they're a little bit involved. So I'll need a little bit of time. Oh, I did want to self-correct. Okay. I Mm. looked into it. It's a 62-year-old white lady. Oh. And that was the 21-year-old claim. Oh, she's now 62. Yeah. So she would have been 41, which is still about 10 years older than the other people that are the other accusers. Yeah. It does seem a little bit odd that, uh, that you would be 40 and being sexually harassed in that way, but we're going with it. Okay. I wanted to move into this, uh, San Francisco story. Cause this is, okay. uh, this is, uh, horrible and entertaining at the same time. So robberies and other crimes have been on the rise in San Francisco, especially, Well, due to a number of factors, but especially since the DA there refuses to prosecute petty thefts and other crimes and releases criminals upon capture. (laughs) 
They, they just don't care about crime in San Francisco in general. But in particular, in this Twin Peaks neighborhood, there's been a rise in car break ins. And residents uh, say this particular area has been targeted after the San Francisco Metro Transportation Authority closed the access to um, to the road or closed the access road to the popular Vista Point, uh, or at least closed it to car traffic, I guess because of the pandemic. Now, I think what this means, I wasn't exactly sure, but I think what this means is there's a road that goes up to the high point. They close that off. So instead, cars can't drive up there. They par- they park in this residential area. And that's an opportunity for uh, car break-ins and thieves, which creates a problem for residents of this neighborhood. Right. A lot of cars are being left vulnerable, basically. So local CBS KPIX sends a reporter to go talk to residents in this Twin Peaks neighborhood. And while he's making his report on robbery, he gets robbed at gunpoint. And we can't see the robbery itself, but we can hear the reporter and the resident uh, who he was interviewing describe uh, what actually happened and this is what they say the scene was like. Yeah, Neighbors on Twin Peaks say scenes like this one from December of car break-in after car break-in have been commonplace since the roads to the top were closed. This afternoon, the smash and grabs turned into armed robbery. You want the camera? I just kept my hands up like this. KPIX5 reporter Don Ford was on the story yesterday and again today and was preparing to interview nearby homeowners when a white luxury sedan with four men inside pulled up. The car came up here while we're about to do an interview. Three guys jumped out. One had a gun, put it up to my face and said, we're taking the camera. My whole thought at the moment was, let's be calm. Let's not get this guy excited. He's got the gun. I don't. So you take the camera. Why? It's yours, buddy. This homeowner stood very still as the scene unfolded in front of him. I just looked and I said, I'm not going to get shot today. No one was injured, but everyone was shaken. The homeowner says safety of the neighborhood has to be addressed and a priority going forward. You want to have that for open space? We want that too. But protect us. We shouldn't pay the penalty and the price for, for that action that SFMTA caused upon us. As soon as San Francisco Supervisor Rafael Mandelman heard about what happened to Don, he began tweeting saying it was ridiculous and unacceptable, but not unexpected in San Francisco. It's troubling, it's concerning, it was an extremely brazen crime, um, and it reinforces, I think, concerns that I'm hearing from my constituents in that area. That guy's in charge. Yikes. Well, it's not unexpected. What can you do? You know, it is San Francisco. (laughs) Apparently the camera was the only thing stolen and it had a tracking chip. So it was later (laughs) recovered. I didn't see a lot of description of what that was like as far as the recovery of the camera and presumably the arrest of the thieves. I thought the most interesting thing about this was, was actually the philosophy on guns and self-defense. Yeah, like, Uh, I clearly didn't have a gun. What could I possibly do? Yeah. When the guy said, oh, he's got the gun, so whatever he says goes, he's my boss now. Well, uh, maybe not if you had a gun. Yeah. Maybe if the power was equalized, you wouldn't be victimized. I don't know. the, The homeowner said, I just looked at him, and I thought, I'm not gonna get shot today. As the... As though that had any impact on you not getting shot. Is that the reason you didn't get shot or is the reason you didn't get shot just because this criminal decided not to shoot you for whatever reason? Yeah. Yeah. The thought had absolutely no impact whatsoever. Um, And you had no power in that situation. I'm glad you put yourself in a mental happy place, but you can put yourself in a mental happy place and still be dead five seconds later. Exactly. Yeah. And just the the automatic deferral to the city to protect you. Know, I agree. He's complaining at the end, and he lives in the area, and I I'm, I sympathize with that. And he's saying the the city's basically hanging us out to dry, security wise. I agree that the city and the government have an obligation and a duty and a job to protect the rights of the people in that area and and punish and stop the robbers. But you don't have to be helpless and at the whim of the robbers. You could defend yourself. And I say this theoretically because I know in San Francisco. One of the top comments on this video was it's a good thing they didn't defend themselves or we would have had a real crime scene. That's that's what would happen. So I understand. I understand that if let's say they pull out their own Glock and shoot that guy in the head. I guarantee they would still be prosecuted. 
Yeah. I understand that reality. So I'm just talking philosophically and in a principled world here, not necessarily in the legal world of San Francisco. But it, it, what I'm trying to say is imagine waiting for that fruitcake to defend you. That guy, that last guy at the end who's like, well, you know, what could you do? It's San Francisco. Yeah, it's outrageous. But what do you expect? If you're waiting for that guy to put on a superhero cape and come save you, it's never going to happen. So you have two options. One, you can leave, which I would also advise, but I know that's logistically <laughs> yeah. difficult. Or two, you can take measures to protect yourself. Yeah, I, I same thing. If I call 911, I want someone from my local emergency response team to come help me. But I'm not counting on that. I know that there's a lot of time between that call and there's a lot of things that robbers or anybody else can do to me in that time frame. I am not putting my safety and betting it on that sort of dude who wears a mask outside to tell you that uh, there's nothing you can do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's the gayest thing about that guy. <laughs> it the is. The parade of dicks in and out of his ass. It is. That is. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do. You're just going to have to fend for yourself and just, just smack him away. Just smack away. Also that don't fend for yourself. That is the one yeah. thing we will <laughs> prosecute in this city. Seriously speaking, I, I feel like I'm being really harsh on this homeowner. I have a lot of sympathy. I thought for you were going to say a homo. <laughs> <laughs> him too. Him yeah. too. I, if you're, especially if you're someone who's lived in San Francisco for forever, maybe you've had property there for forever and you're watching a city allow criminals to run rampant throughout the city and also tell you that you will be prosecuted if you defend yourself. Yeah. I understand how difficult of a spot that is. I don't want to be too harsh. I'm just saying you got to confront the reality of what this city is, which is totally hostile to any semblance of your rights. And that means either that you're going to have to gamble by protecting yourself and potentially putting yourself at the mercy of the city and the state's legal system, or you're just going to have to cut your losses and get the hell out of there. That is the yeah. reality in these cities. Yep. Okay. Time for a little hoax hate. And this one is a good one. And now the nobody saw it happen, but it's totally a product of Trump's America hoax hate crime of the week. Ah, shit, it's backwards. You think they'll notice? In Arlington, Washington, which is north of Seattle, police were called to a bus stop near a middle school after a report of a young black man brandishing a handgun. That man, Taman Leverett, later said that uh, he was stopped and frisked, frisked by police for no reason other than being black. But after investigation, it turns out it was actually Taman who reported himself to 911. Mm. The exact motive is unclear, but it is speculated the intent was to provoke police into some type of George Floyd incident. This is according to police. A caller later revealed to be Taman, but claiming to be someone named Stacy Williams, called 911 on February 22nd to report a young 16 or 17 year old black male brandishing a gun with a red bandana tied around it. This is what the call sounded like. Okay, go ahead and tell me exactly what's happened. Well, I'm at the bus stop and there's a, there's a colored young man and he's, I can see a pistol right there in his, in his waistband. It seems to be funny every time, every time a car is driving, but I'm just a little scared out with my sister, but I think we're going to walk home now. And is he black, white, Hispanic? He's African American. Okay. I'm so I'm fidgeting with a pistol at the bus stop, so it kind of scared me. You can tell that he's not even old enough to have a pistol. He, he only looks 16, 17 years old. Do you recall what color the pistol was? Was it like silver or black? Or I got a glimpse of it. It was black with a red bandana tied around it. The pistol had a red bandana tied around it? Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. I wasn't clear when I first listened to this, but in the incident report, it does note Quote, it sounded like a male speaking in a higher pitch to simulate that of a female's voice. Stacy, the worst fake white voice I've ever heard in my life. I, in fairness, I, I, I've known there have been black male players in the NFL named Stacy. I've seen such things. So I guess it could be a black guy's name or a white guy's name, a male name in general. But it does sound like he was trying to portray an actual Stacy as in Chad and Stacy like that. And it didn't really come off that way. But OK, so he makes the call. Stacy makes the call Taman playing Stacy to report himself. He gave a thorough description of himself. When officers arrived, they spotted Taman. They briefly searched him, but found no weapons. 
The bandana claim was supposed to be a reference to the Bloods gang. Taman does actually have a known affiliation with the Bloods, apparently. Hmm. So officers asked Taman about a gun that was reported, but he didn't have a weapon on him and he denied having one. Police never recovered one. The officer. So the, the officers were curious. They, they called Stacy Williams to follow up. And uh, the, the call went to voicemail. And the voice on the voicemail message sounded very similar to Taman. Mm, imagine that. So the officer asked dispatch if that phone number had previously been used on any prior 911 calls. There were, in fact, prior calls from someone named Taman L, according to records. So TLDR, this guy used his own phone, which had been previously used to contact police and or 911 to make a what hoax call. Oh. rookie mistake but apparently he'd done it before and not been this has not this had not yet been uncovered in december he used that number claiming to be someone named eric johnson and he similarly reported a young armed armed black male fitting to mon's description so it looks like he's been trying to do this provocation bit he is on some sort of pro, uh, probation or parole or something like that because he's got one of the ankle belts that he's he's known to the justice system and they're monitoring him so he's trying to set up these situations in which he can claim to be abused by police and of course what's the great irony he tried to bait these so-called vicious racist cops into abusing him and even with a claim that he was recklessly brandishing a firearm, the police still showed up and treated him kindly and with respect and did not abuse him in any way <laughs> and diligently looked into what happened to the point that they unraveled the scam. Oh. So tough one. I think he's facing uh, unlawful report charges. I forget the exact charges. Is that but, a charge? Uh, it's it's one long forgotten um, in uh <laughs> In, in cases of hoax hate like this, because a lot of times they just don't bring them. It does say he called police himself according to charges. I forget exactly what the mm. charges are, but there's something false report charges of some sort that he faces now. So we'll see if anything, if Stacy Williams is retired or if that personality will return for future calls. Lastly, did you see the, did you see or hear the poetry of Amanda Gorman at the presidential <laughs> inauguration? Yes, and the Super Bowl. She was at the Super Bowl too. I missed that. Yeah, was she I think there? So. I don't know. Didn't she, she might do have a been. commercial. Yeah, she could have been for sure. Or am I thinking about that Black Slam poet? Uh, maybe I don't know. Amanda Gorman gave this lengthy uh, po- poem at right before Biden took the oath about how it was about the history of injustice and rising above to unify. And blah blah blah. Bunch of flowery Biden nonsense. She now claims that she's the victim of racial profiling. She said on Friday night, a security guard tailed her on her walk home. She says this security guard demanded to know if, uh, if she lives there in this building and said she looked suspicious. Amanda showed the security guard her keys and buzzed herself into the building. The, sec- the security guard left no apology, according to Amanda. Um, I, would, I would speculate that's because that's the security guard's job to... Take a look at things, and if there's nothing to see, then go away. But, yeah. uh, okay, you can demand an apology for that. Amanda says, quote, This is the reality of black girls. One day you're called an icon, the next day a threat. I'm guessing that's code for uh, poetry sales have been a little bit down. <laughs> so yeah, we got to get real. back into the spotlight a little bit. This allegedly happened in the L.A. area. Local media reached out to her on Twitter in reply to this tweet. Uh, for additional details, no response that I can see. Uh, No ID provided on the security guard, no corroboration, no demonstration of actual victimhood, just a security guard checking on something. Brazen. And we're brazen. Yeah, we're we're supposed to buy all the crying and uh, more specifically buy her her poetry. Of course, the hill we climb her inauguration day poem comes out on March 30th. And I'm sure this has absolutely nothing to do with that. This is not a publicity stunt to sell poetry books in any yeah. way. I'm sure this was actually the racial justice, a racial injustice of her lifetime. Anyway, that's all I got. What a weird week. Every week is bizarre. <laughs> well, uh, I have to be very unprofessional and I have to pee very badly. So oh, you almost made it. I did. But, uh, I'll get through some of these super chats. That then. one beer, that one Christine Blasey Ford beer, Blasey Ford beer ran through me. So uh, 
I will step out. I will be back momentarily. I fat hooligan says Matt. Oh, I will skip this one and come back. Fat hooligan. Um, Bill Biz says correction spelling on interview suggestion is Laura Towler. I got it. You didn't have to send that ten dollars, Bill. Let us know if you want us to send it back. Um, Peter R shot a. I should wait for Matt on this one too, um, because. I don't know anything about guns. Long Dong John says, I'm declaring Matt Corona Damus. The flu vaccine is widely available. Any politicians continuing enacting masks and lockdowns because the flu and cops enforcing them should be swinging from the streetlights. Defensively, Susan. Defensively. Tyler Hagginson, I'm recording metal musician in North. I'm a recording metal musician in North Idaho. I'd like to show my appreciation by making some music using show clips, or if anyone else would like some help with their music, let me know. I can help. Tyler Hagginson, Hagginson, two A's, H-A-A-G-E-N-S-O-N. Thank you, Tyler. The Arctic Travel says, happy birthday to my amazing wife who gave us two beautiful twins last Sunday. Oh, congratulations. We're both longtime watchers. Keep up the great work, Matt and Blonde. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, there were already two that I had to that I had to wait for you. Um, because I don't know anything about guns. This is from Fat Hooligan. Oh. Matt, fun new firearm. Check out the Typhoon F12. It's an AR platform semi-auto shotgun with a 10-round magazine. Turns targets into confetti. <laughs> I, I don't have any semi-auto shotguns, actually. And I've yeah. seen some AR platform shotguns that look really interesting. I think the Saiga AK shotguns are really cool, just aesthetically. But I have shied away from them because I really only use shotguns for self-defense, home defense purposes. And I just I've had some questions about their reliability. Some people say mm-hmm. that semi-auto shotguns are a little rough in that on that front. So I actually don't own any, but I'm sure it's very fun. Also, Peter R shot a um, 1941 Enfield rifle and 1951 SKS at Cherry Ridge Range in New Jersey this weekend. Mention Phoenix Ammo to anyone who would listen along with the mm. promo code G's. No, it's promo code ML Christensen. G's is over at Sonoran Defense. Uh oh. Oh, <laughs> but it's just as well. Don't let those bastards have our ammo. There's only so much to go around right now <laughs> to help support my two favorite yeah. YouTubers. Thank you so much. No, th- th- thanks for spreading the word for the show and for um, our friends over at Phoenix. Uh, I think I think I'm on the cusp of a Twitter ban because I got temporarily. They said they were going to ban me for seven days and then they backed off. I know Phoenix just came off a Twitter ban. So just talk about Meghan Markle. That's a lot of have you seen? Well, I guess you're. I don't know how much you go on Twitter to see what's being talked about. Meghan Markle is getting absolutely eviscerated on Twitter. I know she was on Oprah tonight and I'm going to watch it because a lot of people are saying that she's sold out the Royal family. And I don't give a shit about the Royal family, but the accusation is that she's basically talking a bunch of shit about Harry's family and Harry just sits there and takes it, which seems consistent with what I've seen in the past. Yeah. I don't know. I, I love being lectured about how they just want their privacy. Meanwhile, they're on national TV interviews. With some, if you just want your privacy, shut the hell up and go away. Should Once have married Christina. You know he was dating a smoking hot white English rose that was like five <laughs> years his junior before this. That's the problem Why? with Meghan Markle. Number one, <laughs> what her age or her race? Either. Well, it's, she she was previously married, I guess. Oh yes, yeah, that's right. Um, no, it's just it's just a bizarre choice in woman for a, for a litany of reasons. I don't get it. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't really get it. I've had some people try to argue to me that Meghan Markle is more attractive than Kate. That's just nonsense. That is asinine. And I've heard my husband say that. And I was like, I will kill you while you sleep. You and I agree on so little aesthetically. Mm -hmm. Kate Middleton is maybe the one thing that we agree on aesthetically. But we've already talked way too much royals. She's so classy. Yeah, she's great. You know what I like about her? I've barely ever heard her talk. I don't even know what her voice sounds like. <laughs> you know what it sounds like? It sounds like a posh British accent, which is Probably, right yeah. up there with the Australian accent as the best. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Boogeyman 917 says, frankly, you two are the best. Cheers. Cheers to you. Oh, well, thank you. Jacob says, as someone with more Neanderthal DNA than 96% of other people alive, according to the wiki wiki sister who runs 23 and me. I take offense ah. and demand reparations. I also am high in Neanderthal DNA. We talked about it. I, I was week. reading I a little think... bit about Neanderthals because I was curious and they're, they're technically extinct, but what does that mean? Like how much Neanderthal no idea. DNA no idea. do you have to have? Mm. Do you know, have to man. be 51% for them not to be extinct or what's the threshold? 
I don't know. Uh, incompetent. The, the important thing is that we all came from Africa. As long as everybody knows. That. Never forget. Never forget. Of course, if we're all African by descent, how could anyone ever be racist? Well, I couldn't because I am 100% black. I'm, I'm a 100% <laughs> African American. Um, and I love Meghan Markle. Just to be very Beautiful clear, woman. Susan, please monetize this stream. Yep. Uh, incompetent hands. Uh, I'm getting $1,400. I see a defensively Susan t-shirt in my future. <laughs> At least I can do it for my favorite YouTubers. I want it in flannel so I can easily describe myself to 911 using my own damn phone. Damn job. <laughs> I have not secured any flannel manufacturing deals. That said, if you are out there and you want to manufacture flannels for the merch, uh, the merch store, I am intrigued. I am interested by the opportunity. And if you decide to pick up merch, if you try to pick up a defensively Susan t-shirt, uh, thank you for supporting the show. And by the way, everything in this, in the shop is fully customizable as in you can place existing graphics on different items, but I'd like to keep, the the store a little bit more active as we've revamped it so if there are ideas for shirts or graphics that you would like to see uh send them my way because i, I want to keep things freshened up i want to keep it interesting as we keep it going keep it fresh also can somebody link me where i can buy murdoch murdoch um merch and it actually goes to the creators of murdoch murdoch somebody made a ripping red off bubble. their branding or something yeah hmm. and i almost bought a fake t-shirt the other day and i was like mm. I don't know. Uh, Photobet says sending a little money y'all's way since I was able to find a job after being laid, laid off before Texas ice Mageddon. I appreciate wow. the show every week, but I'll catch, I'll have to catch this one tomorrow as I'm currently SBRing my PS 90. Well, that's sweet. <laughs> uh, the P uh, it's uh, the PS 90 is a very cool, uh, a very cool gun, uh, like sub gun from FN. So it's hard to even describe cause it looks like an alien gun and it fires a, a very specific, five, seven cartridge. It's kind of like a mini rifle round. Um, oh. And they're really cool. Uh, they, and they actually take these weird top loading magazines that hold 50 rounds. And to SBR, it means that he's going to have a barrel under 16 inches that he has to register with the federal government and wait for them to check all his shit and submit fingerprints and stuff. But when he's all done, he's going to have a very cool firearm that very few people actually own, which is awesome. Huh. Buddha 56, uh, laughing my ass off. Masks are useless. Go useless. Government is useless. You know, United States dollar is useless. The only thing left is to invest in lead and brass for future value and preserve your own freedom. <laughs> Those are the real precious <laughs> metals. Yeah, we're about there. Laurel says bets on how much longer Biden stays before President Kamala is sworn in. Um, I don't know. Six months. I've been saying 4th of July the whole time that I think he's probably out by then. Or if not out, like a, a commitment to or at least talks about it. Yeah. If we're through the summer and there's no and he's still in office and there's no talk about getting rid, rid of him, I'll be surprised. Yeah, me too. Luke Gibson, we were asked to live a lie and 93% of us complied by October. No wonder the lies of politics are stampeding out of control without a second thought. That's true. Yeah. There's too much widespread compliance and that's on us. Eric Nervik, sorry for the caller who can't find a woman in SoCal. However, they are out there. I am dating a super traditional Catholic Hispanic woman from L.A. and moved there to be closer. Hope he finds somebody. Moved they to L.A. She must be fantastic. Yeah, but she's real hot. I hope you both get the hell out of there soon, though. Got that Latina curve <laughs> yeah. situation. Yeah. Um, Plum Logan Blonde, do you know Radio Free Readout? It's Spokane-based podcast that sounds like your kind of people. I've heard about them, never listened to them. Hmm. I should check it out. Pierce Lord Phillips, Australian here. Greetings from the future. Here's a small contribution so that blonde can better celebrate tomorrow's international women's day. I thought, Pierce. isn't it women's month? What are they? How many Ugh. things do they get? Seriously? Ugh. Um, doesn't matter if you compress sicknick's ashes into a di <laughs> into a diamond and someone steals that diamond. Are they guilty of kidnapping? <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> Ovid says, Eric, <laughs> What will you do against the government? We have nuke Swalwell bet his eyes were open a little bit on January 6th. Uh, yeah. Um, I gotta Why didn't he just call the government to nuke them for him? Yeah, really? Yeah. Um, it, it, the irony is so rich in that entire story. Do, 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 do. Yeah, let me um, catch up on some of the other platforms briefly. Uh, chubby stubby gifting subs. Appreciate it. Um, let's see. Good on Trovo. Good on D Live because D Live doesn't let people chat over there, or at least super chat. 
Appreciate you guys nonetheless. And let's see. David, oh God, where did I? I forgot where I left off on uh, Tippy Stream. Uh, David, hey guys, can't listen tonight, but extremely. Uh, oh, this was the engagement when we did read that. Martin said that Texas law is interesting, but couldn't companies argue that their censorship itself is speech and therefore protected under Section 230 as well as the First Amendment, rendering the law unconstitutional? If money is speech, how is censorship not? I think. Yeah, I think you'd probably what you're going with there is is kind of an association argument, which has been impl, which has been interpreted into the First Amendment. Effectively, it's not part of the explicit language. And yeah. yeah, on principle, I want to defend that. I don't think that you should be forced to do business with anybody for any reason in the perfect principled world. That said, the perfect principled world is so far gone now. I just I don't know if they if if we're going to get down and dirty and fight with swords like, all right, I guess I got to pick up a couple of their swords, which I am not thrilled about. I am. But what are you supposed to do? I I just don't see a lot of remaining options because I remain committed to trying to persuade them with reason. I will do it. (laughs) I will do it with every breath that I have. But Those at some days point, are over, man. at some point, they are at your castle breaking down your door. And yeah, I think I think we're there. I yeah, I, I mean, it's the First Amendment is what it is. The Second Amendment is what it is. That's not a threat, Susan, or anybody else. It just means first with your words to ever to the fullest extent possible until people come to abuse you. And then you got to use force. I, I take no yeah. joy in that. But that's that is the reality of the situation. John Gray says, Swalwell is virtue signaling. If he tries to sue, will totally open himself up to investigations. He's an idiot and can't be that dumb. He is that dumb. He, he, yeah, he's done a lot of dumb stuff. So I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised to see him pursue it. Somebody in my house is listening to the Pointer Sisters so loud. The Pointer Sisters? I don't even know what that is. You know that song? I'm so excited (laughs) and I just can't hide it. What? You know it. I know the song, but why the hell is someone listening to that? I don't know. My parents think that like the baby wants to listen to certain kinds of music. And mm. I'm like, I don't really think she cares. Isn't music pretty good for a child's development? I've heard that. Yeah, I don't know. I also heard them listen to Uptown Funk like five times in a row. <laughs> okay. uh, Esoterica Unbound. The genetic legacy of Neanderthals is carried most strongly by Europeans. Clearly, Neanderthal mm. thinking is just a racist dog whistle for math objective Object, objectivity, linear logic, the work ethic, ethic, and other whiteness. Maybe. Oh, does it mean I'm extra white? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Knuckle hunky buck. Didn't the Supreme Court find it was unconstitutional for Trump to block people on Twitter? How is it okay for Biden to disable comments on YouTube? That's a violation of my First Amendment rights. It was, um, it was a court in New York. I forget if it was a state court or a federal court. It was not the Supreme Court. But that was a decision that was issued. I do remember that. So, yeah, if you have a constitutional right to follow Trump's Twitter account and you can't be blocked in that way, which is what that court said. I I don't don't know if that's correct, but that's what they said. Do you have a constitutional right to comment on a Biden video or is it sufficient just to be able to watch the Biden video? Yeah. I mean, honestly, Trump blocking you from that perspective is not as bad because you can still look at his tweets, just log out or use a private browser or just use a different account. You can still see the tweets. There is no once they block comments on the YouTube video, there's no substitute. There's no way around that. There's nothing you can do, which is a shame because uh, you know that the comments on that particular video with Joe and Nancy acting the way that they were would have been so much better than the video itself. Would have been a goldmine. I saw uh, (laughs) a. I saw a YouTube stream from the White House. I forget what exactly what it was, but the it is amazing to see the White House YouTube channel still get get stream numbers that are well below established streams on YouTube. This was this stream from the White House channel was at 1900 viewers live. Oh my gosh, and it was also we doubled at, that tonight. It was also at 1900 down like down votes. So to have that many people watching live and disliking is quite a feat. Yikes. Um, Shauna Thornton said, Blonde, how do you find a therapist that isn't a total rad femme? Hmm. Okay. Um, I have obsessive compulsive disorder. So I had to go to like a specialist, like a, a cognitive behavioral therapy specialist. People in specialist fields are typically 
male and interested in the science behind mental health issues. Mm. So just don't go to a woman and you're going to be in like a way better situation politically. Also, um, talk therapy is not super helpful. So as long as you don't go to a female talk therapist, you might be in a better place. Um, the Omega man says, uh, check out CN Arsenal. If you dig firearms history, history, I huh. will do that. I'm not familiar with the channel. C and Arsenal. Arsenal. C and R. Arsenal. Yeah. Evan M. Is it just me or does Jen Saki look like she asked to be choked during sex? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'll have to just circle Gross. back with Maybe. you. The world um, may Swiffner. never know. <laughs> Interesting faux pas by Pelosi. All the president's men out there. Wait, is she referring to Trump or to Biden? If Trump, now he's El Presidente. If Biden, what is she even talking about? Yeah, that was incoherent rambling. I was like, are these words? What is she saying? Yeah, all the president's men. Yeah, I guess she must have meant the ex-president or the former president. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it was a slip that all the president's men are actually out there. The national guard. And I don't say that as a shot at the national guard. I understand there are people who give you orders and you know, you're kind of uh, at their mercy, but the, the people that are out there are, are Biden's men now. Yeah. Uh, they are not Trump's men. So it is an interesting way to consider that commentary. That dead eye guy, we've entered third trimester and now it's cruise control until our daughter is born. I'm terrified, mm. but excited for what's to come. Idaho moves still on the roadmap. This year show is great. As always, congratulations. That is great cruise to hear. through that third trimester. Once you get to 33 weeks, you can just hang out. Um, All the best for the move as well. I, I hope you guys are able to achieve that. Chemical 666. I'll be the Karen and ask to speak to Biden's manager. I think that will go over. <laughs> uh, yeah. Lisa Verche. No, no. Thank you, ma'am. Eric Nervik. If I can, I would like to shout out the Worthy House podcast on YouTube and Apple. He does book reviews from a conservative perspective. Very good content. And that's cool. called the Worthy House. Eric with a K, too. I like that. I like it. Yeah. Holden Mulray, hi, truth seekers. Many don't know there exists a $2 bill. I hear it's queer. It has Thomas Jefferson's <laughs> portrait on it. I wonder if a $2 trillion bill will be here one day. If so, whose picture be on it? Come on, man. No doubt. We're we're close. Come on, man. We're close to uh, needing that one. A $2 trillion bill to buy a gallon of milk. We are uh, quickly approaching. Chemical says, wanted to ask for prayers for Aaron Fish, 26. He was my troop and my friend. He lived the good life, fought the good life, and made the ultimate mm. sacrifice. Never forget, I will keep him in my prayers. All the best to you and Aaron. Thank you. KLGY88, uh, what are your thoughts about Fauci dodging the question about Florida being in the middle of the pack without mask mandates on CNN using Google YouTube? You can't find the video anywhere. Mm. Had to use DDG and VPN. Yikes. Maybe they memory hold that one beyond me i never even heard of this or I saw it, what, it I, yeah. so i don't know what he said i would love to hear his answer though what explains florida data relative to california or new york yeah. shauna thornton and caps pointed out that sometimes the l's will sometimes let one fall to show that the collective is morally pure also mm. they pointed out that maybe c is just a d-bag without t it's scapegoat time cuomo is just a d-bag without trump is that it must be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm open to any and all theories, even the blue and on ones, uh, because yeah. this is just, it is hard to, this is not an accident. There's some coordination and planning going on here. So who's doing it and why? Fair questions. Um, Michael Tyler says no high profile Dem could c comes under this sort of pressure by accident. Stinks of an organized campaign. Robert Barnes said it's preemptive strike to prevent <laughs> Cuomo running against Kamala. He has, no appeal. There's just no way. Neither does she. But but even yeah. even still, let's say that um, Joe Biden is predictably moved out before 2024. Is anybody really going to primary Kamala at that point? You'd think she'd just get the presumptive nomination, yeah. as is usually the case for incumbent presidents, even though she's not purely speaking one. She has no broad appeal either though i think cuomo even well i don't know he's pretty damaged goods now but cuomo six months ago definitely would wreck kamala in an electoral contest oh well yeah yeah for sure yeah um did i just read this michael tyler one yeah 
Uh, Shauna Thornton, Seattle commies I know say that censorship is the result and punishment the right gets because of the cake baker case. Their stance is you get what you fucking deserve. Obviously, the situations aren't the same. Uh, maybe if there was one cake baker in the country that did all of the cake baking and no other cake bakers were allowed to bake cakes. Yeah. I mean, I, I think on a pure level, they're somewhat comparable. Just do you have a right to refuse business to somebody or not? Uh, I th- but I think there's a distinction to be made there. How much of the market do you control? And I also think there's a distinction to be made that Jack Phillips, the cake, the classic cake baker in Colorado, he just wants yeah. to be left alone. Okay. The, and he, it's, he did not coordinate with other bakeries to ban people from service and he didn't go to other bakeries and and try to coordinate that sort of thing because remember the idea here is okay go find a baker who will do that which by the way you you can do with relative ease you can find a baker to bake a gay wedding cake pretty easily and you can go build your own twitter it was called parlor guess what they did they (laughs) chased them off the internet and it's only recently back on why are we having the coordination of these of these big tech quasi monopolies why are they coordinating with each other to blacklist certain people from the entirety of the market that i think is is a step well beyond anything that ever happened in the cake baking context Mm -hmm. i don't think that you should force the cake baker to bake you a cake that said i would say the baker is wrong if he goes to the next guy down the street and tries to coerce him into not baking the cake either agreed uh, Krishna, are you here? Vandenberg AFB is blocking airmen from taking leave or going more than an hour from base if they don't get voluntarily get the COVID vaccine. Oh, God. <gasps> Other commands may be doing the same seems sketch. That is horrible. Yeah, the, the reports of uh, of initial military refusal to get the vaccine are quite high. Something like a third, maybe higher. That's good. Yeah, I'm yeah. disappointed it's not more. Gizmo 79, one half the country is slowly being forced to conform to the progressive cult. Looking two years into the future is terrifying. Can you imagine what you will be talking about then? I can. It's scary. Like I said, yeah. I, kn- I know it's a cliche repeated point, but I just wish I could sit with myself at this desk a year <laughs> oh, ago listen, and be listen. like, <laughs> yeah, you think it's bullshit that the ski resort <gasps> shut down? Get ready. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, I, I would love to see my own face <laughs> reacting to that news. Now multiply that by 10. Yeah, to... to I don't see how this progresses without ending in serious conflict. I just don't. Um, I don't want to see some of this year was funny. Well, a lot of this year was violent and the violence and is only going to get worse. Progress. Yeah. yeah. Talk to us when we have to have mandatory vaccine passports to do anything. Yes. Which is already, they're talking about doing that in New York. Andrew Cuomo was talking about that. They've done that in some countries. You're going to have a weird, you're going to have, weird like second class society of people who refuse it and you're not allowed to do anything you're not allowed to go to sports games you're not allowed to go to movies you might not be allowed to go to a grocery store i don't give a shit that's the that is the line in the sand for me i will i will not take that Mm -hmm. vaccine i'll garden my own damn food i'll raise chickens in my backyard i'm not doing it you're like oh but then you can't fly i don't care yes i won't fly i just drove to colorado with my baby I'll do it again. That's right. Speaking of which, that. I am flying in a few weeks and I'm uh, pretty worried about it. What about uh what if they do state checkpoints too? What if when you drive into Colorado yeah. they want to make sure that you've had it? Yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to get my family out to Idaho. Hmm. Um, Matt Fields says up to $900 is petty theft in California. Everything is behind glass that can be in almost every store in California. Now the police don't come out for theft anymore. The leaders don't represent us. Ain't that the truth? You can steal an Xbox and like four games, but not five. That was the line. (laughs) Seattle too. (laughs) Yeah. Um, oh, the thing I was going to tell you, cause I've, I've flown, I think this year I only flew once in September. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, uh, there's no way around it. I put on the stupid mask to get on the plane and all that. Like, I, we're going to see family. I don't have a choice. All right. Yeah. I just have to do this. So I did it. Eat the peanuts very slowly. Eat the pretzels very so slowly. slowly. Get that Diet Coke. Sip it at the slowest possible pace. That's good advice. I mean, I don't know what I don't wear a mask on my baby. And so mm-hmm. I'm worried that she's going to be freaking out that she can see my face and i also walked around airport terminals like i had a a buff on but it was not over my face i had it in case anybody wanted to make a scene of it so i could escape but really nobody in the airport itself bothered me other than security and like 
when you're checking in with the mm. the gate agent. So I can just wear like cloth over my face? That's what I did. Yeah, I used the neck gator, like the buff type thing. Okay. The neck gators. I didn't use the the, the typical mask. And I mm. like that because I can just pull it down on my neck and that's it. And then if someone's, ooh, you, could you please do this? I pull it up on my face for five seconds and walk away. That was my so strategy. Upsetting. And it that's got a good me idea. Through. John West, um, but the government has nukes. Oh, I would fart well need an improvised weapon. Yeah, amazing. Mm, he was so threatened, yet he, yet he has nukes at his disposal. Uh, 2 edu says, Blonde, your Owen Benjamin collab was awesome. Matt, oh, if you buy... Uh, you. It, or Matt, it may be time to have a firearm channel or expert guest on to do a stream. Lots of gun talk in the chat lately. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I uh, I am... In, I am. I don't even know if I would say enthusiast. I am a firearm enjoyer. And uh, I have some limited knowledge. And I like to talk about it. I know that not all of our audience are, are gun people, so I try not to push it too much. But uh, it is obviously of a lot of interest to a big segment of the audience right now, even people who normally don't care about talking about guns because they get no recreational enjoyment out of it. Now it's more of a survival thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, interesting times. I'm sorry. Did not. No, go ahead. If the federal government was dissolved tomorrow, what would we lose? Why can't States do their own thing? Federal government is outliving its usefulness. Is the military the only reason we really need it? Uh, do we really, do we really need it? I, if you deleted the federal government tomorrow, not only would I not feel any negative effects, I would throw a party. Yeah, really. I think the federal government has appropriate functions, uh, collective defense of the states, the military border defense, which ironically they don't do anymore. The things, the only things that they're supposed to be doing, they don't do the things that they have no constitutional business doing at all. They have all their tentacles in. it is such a perversion of the intended design, but because it's so far gone, it would be beneficial to have it deleted right now, not just yeah. modified, but outright yeah. erased. I would rather have nothing in DC than this perversion of what it's supposed to be. So yeah, uh, go ahead. But as we've learned, uh, the idea that that correction or dissolving is going to happen because minds are suddenly awakened philosophically is uh, it's a nice thought, but power is never surrendered so easily it uh, yep. power concentrates and then there is revolution power concentrates and then there is revolution exactly. don't endorse such things susan it's just a historical fact yep all right uh we good on youtube yep all right i think uh I might just have a couple more well, now we're actually good on tippy stream and i want to give a shout out to uh chubby stubby uh for sending out some subscriptions over on Trovo. Appreciate you guys. A lot of people joining the channel tonight on Trovo as well. Thank you guys for keeping the community alive. D live. I appreciate you guys for hanging out. I wish that we could chat, but D live has banned such things. So we'll have to move on. Anyway, if we're all set, we will call it a show. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with us tonight. It is much appreciated as always. Thanks for keeping us in touch with the facts in the chat and uh, hanging out with us live. If you are listening to the show later on demand on YouTube or BitChute or Trovo or DLive or wherever you may get the show, thank you kindly as well for tuning in. If you would like uh, more material to listen to, if you can't get enough, there is more material on the audio platforms, Blonde's interview series. That's all up there. You can listen back to the call-in show that we do every Wednesday. That's all up there. Everything else show related is also on the website. That's mattchristensenmedia.com. We got the show shop. We got the audio platforms. Everything's linked there for your convenience. And of course, uh, you can also message us through the website as well. In the meantime, we will be back next Sunday. Because if it's Sunday, sorry, Chuck Todd. It's not Meet the Press. It is the Matt and Blonde Show. Have a good night.